of raises to the Moza. So tonight's topic is called Clueless Black Negroes. Clueless Black Negroes. Okay. Ramaphosa and Mokwe Mokwe. Today is their day. Okay. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter one, verse one. <laughs> you know what? Before we get to Deuteronomy one and one, give me, give me the book of John 8.32. Give me John 8.32. Okay, John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Read that for me. The book of John chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So this is Christ speaking. He says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because as a people, we don't know what the truth is. We are clueless. We are confused. We are lost in the source. You understand? We are being confused by all these nations on earth. We don't know because we don't know who we are. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 9, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 16. For the leaders of both people cause them to earth. Mm -hmm. And they that are made of them are destroyed. You see what the Bible is saying? It is because the leaders of these people cause them to err. So these so-called black, le black, le black leaders, they are clueless. They don't know what's going on. They, just move with, they are just going with emotions. You understand? Ramaphosa is one. Chief Just, Former Chief Justice Mokwe Mokwe is one. Is another one. You understand? And all the other political leaders that we see, the, the pastors and so forth. But I'm honing on these two. Okay, read the verse again, verse 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 16. For the leaders of this mm -hmm. people caused them to earth, and they that are led of them are destroyed. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, and those that are led of them are destroyed. Because these so-called black leaders, they have no understanding, they have no knowledge, they cannot teach our people nothing. So they are leading our people into destruction. You understand? That's what's going on. Why? Give me that in Lamentations 4. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Because they are, they are leading our people astray. And our people, they trust in that because our people don't have faith. And our people, they don't know who they are. That's why the, the Lord is raising up prophets in these last days to bring our people, to give our people God's commandments. You understand? Read that. Lamentations 4, verse 17. Read it. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. And for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. In mm -hmm. our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So that's the problem right there. Because our people, they are trusting upon these, these clueless black leaders, Ramaphosa and Bumukwe Mukwe. You understand? Just, just to be running their mouths, making deals. They have no idea that they are actually... They are making a deal with the devil. They don't know. You understand? Because they reject the Bible. And our people, they trust, they trust in everything they say. You understand? Read again. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. Mm -hmm. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So now, as a people, these so-called, these clueless black leaders, guess what they do? They are making deals and, and covenants with these nations. You understand? America, Europe, China, and so on. Okay, Russia. So they are doing that because they trust in oppression. They are waiting for these, our oppressors to save them. You understand? They are waiting for the oppressors to save them. The oppressors are not going to deliver our people. You understand? Although they're making deals with them. And the reason why they make deals with them is because of this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. Okay, Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. The reason why you see these clueless black leaders, they are making deals with, um, with these other nations is because of this right here. Read that, Deuteronomy 32 verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Come on. For they are a very forward generation, children, in whom is no faith. That's the problem right there. Children in whom is no faith. Our people have no faith, but they, they, they put their faith in what? They put their, their faith in an oppressive system. They put their faith in the oppressor. Everything that the oppressor brings, they put their faith in there. 
When you bring the Bible and say, listen, we need to return back to the Bible. We need to keep God's commandments so we can rule the earth. They don't want that. They want crumbs that are falling from the master's table. You understand? So they, that's why they are, they are rushing for foreign aid. They don't want to actually go into the Bible to show our people really what's going on. Why are we in the conditions that we are living in? What did we do? What happened to us? What must we do to come out? They have no idea. You understand? So they're just, they're just repeating everything that they hear, everything that they see, which has nothing to do with bringing our people back to the most high God. They don't care about that thing. Now that's why our people have no faith, but they put their faith in an oppressive system. They put their faith in the oppressor. You understand? Read again, verse 20. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 20. And he said, Read. I will hide my face from them. I will see mm -hmm. what their end shall be. For they are Come on. very forward and wicked. Children in whom is no faith. Is that there's the problem is that we are a very forward generation. Children whom is no faith. We lack faith. We don't put our faith in Mosai. We put our faith in everything else but the Mosai God. You understand? So now that the Lord is waking us up in these last days, the Most High God is setting up the real leaders. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 44 verse 1. Okay, the Most High God is setting up the real leaders that are going to be able to lead out, lead the people, they lead the people to, to rule the nations again, like we did in the days of old. Read that. Sarah 44 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 44 verse 1. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers mm -hmm. that became us. You see that thing? It says, let us praise famous men. Who are those famous men? Our fathers that beget us. All that, give me the book of Deuteronomy 1 verse 8. It says, let us praise famous men. Okay? He's going to tell you who those famous men are. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 1 verses 8. Come Behold, on. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to the seed after them. You see that thing? So are these famous men is our fathers that beget us, our forefather Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It says, and to give unto them and to their seed after them. Who is their seed after them? The 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob. You understand? That's their seed after them. That's us today, calling ourselves Bantus and Negroes, Hispanics, Native American Indians. But we make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, go back to Sarah 44, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 1. Come Let on. us now praise famous men uh -huh. and our fathers that beget us. Our fathers that beget us, that's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joshua, Moses, Nehemiah, Nehu, okay, Peter, James, John, Ezekiel. You understand? Those are our forefathers that beget us. Okay, we don't. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through mm -hmm. his great power from the beginning. From the beginning, from the time of Adam. Go ahead. Such as did be rule in their kingdoms. Mm -hmm. men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. You see that thing? Is that such as did they rule in their kingdoms? Because we ruled over great kingdoms in the days of old, during the time of King David, during the time of King Solomon, during the time of King Josiah, King Hezekiah. You understand? We ruled over the kingdoms on earth. Okay, we don't. Come on. Leaders of the people by their councils. Leaders of the people by their councils. They were leaders of the people by their councils. Not by politics, not by the constitution of South Africa, mm -mm, but by their councils. What councils is those? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verses 14. Mm -hmm. When no counsel is, the people fall. 
Go ahead. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, where no counsel is, the people fall. The reason why you see our people are destroyed today is because there's no counsel. Like our forefathers, because our forefathers in the days of old, it says they were leaders of the people by their counsels. Which counsels? Counsels of understanding God's laws. Because that's the counsel that they was using. The laws of the Most High God. To teach and guide the people. You understand? How to rule. How to build families. How to maintain our state of rulership over the nations. Right now, these clueless black leaders, guess what they do? They are bargaining with these nations. But are they really bargaining? No. They are being oppressed. They are being ruled with a fist of iron, with an iron fist. Guess what? Just so they can get what? Get the crumbs that are falling from the white man's table. The EU, the World Bank, America, Europe, Britain. You understand? China. That's what they're doing at the expense of the destruction of their own people because they hate their people. You understand? Read that again, verse 14. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. When yeah. no counsel is, the people fall. But yeah. in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety because the Most High God always made sure that in our captivity, the Lord always raised up prophets, multiple prophets to do what? To be counselors over the people, to be the leaders of the people. You understand? Now go back to where it was at, Sarah 44. Read verse 4 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 4. Read. Leaders of the people by their counsels uh -huh. and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Come on. Why? And eloquent in their, in, their in their instructions. You see what it's saying? It says, it says what? And by their knowledge of learning, good for the people. Their knowledge of learning. Give me that in Sirach 19, verse 19. By their knowledge of learning. What is this knowledge that they learned? What is their knowledge that they learned and used? Use that knowledge to guide the people. Read that. Sirach 19, verse 19. Because our the forefathers was not bumps. You understand? Our forefathers was not bumps. Okay? They, led, they were learned men. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verses 19. Go ahead. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Stop right there. The knowledge of the commandments, the knowledge of the commandments, that's the knowledge our forefathers had, that they, 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 the, the, the knowledge that they had, that was meat for the people because they taught the people God's laws. That's how they were able to be leaders of the people by their learning of the knowledge of God. God's commandments. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verses 19. Read. The knowledge of the commandment of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see that thing shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Living forever, ruling forever. So we don't want equality. We don't want the nations to pay us back for what they've done to us. Mm -mm. We want the whole earth. We want the, the planet Earth back. That's what we want. We don't want to be, we don't want to be side by side with the nations. No, we want the earth back because that is what was given to us from the beginning. The earth was created for our sakes. So we want the earth back. We don't want money because there's no amount of money that will surpass eternal life and rulership and domination of all nations on earth. Nothing can replace that. So we want the earth back. That's what we want. And these clueless black leaders will never teach the people that. They'll teach the people to vote. They'll teach the people to do a toy. They'll teach the people to say what? To say, no, if you, if, if you are unhappy about this housing that we're giving you, you must do a toy. You must vote. You understand? You must wear an ANC t-shirt. No, no, no. To hell with that. We don't want that. We want our earth back. That's what we want. You understand? Go back to Sirach 44. Verse 4 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verses 4. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people. Mm -hmm. Why and eloquent in their instructions. 
They didn't say why. It says wise and eloquent in their instructions. What Bible are you reading? Read that part again. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Wise and eloquent in their instruction because they instructed the people out of God's laws. That's how they instructed the people. They did not use the constitution. Mm -mm. They used the commandments of the Most High God. How to set up families, how to set up a nation, how to lead and maintain the nation. It's rulership over all nations on earth. We use God's laws to do that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Sarah chapter 11. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Watch this. Because the Most High God is raising us up in these last days. He's having mercy upon us. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 11. Read verse 13. Okay. Start with verse 12. We're going to read 12 down. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verses 12. Read. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help, wanting ability and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his lower state. So it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? It says there is none of that is slow because our people, they are slow bellies. You understand? We're slow. So it says, and we need help. We need to be taught who we are. We need to be taught where we come from. We need to be reminded, according to the Bible, what happened to us and why it happened to us and what must we do to come out of these conditions. You understand? That's why it says we need of help, wanting ability. We lack ability. You understand? It says in full of poverty. We are impoverished. As a people, give me that in um, give me that in Isaiah fourteen, the last verse. It says, "Full of poverty." Look at the nation. Look at us as a nation. We are full of poverty. Okay, so these clueless black leaders have no clue what they're doing. That's why they are leading God's people astray. You understand? Read them. Isaiah fourteen, last verse. The book of Isaiah, chapter fourteen. Verses 32. Come on. What shall one say then? What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord had founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. You see that thing? The poor of the or the poor of God's people is the 12 tribes of Israel. Zion. You understand? So go back to where was it? Sarah chapter 11, verse 12 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 12. Again, there is another that is slow and has need of help, wanting ability, full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and sets him up from his low estate. So the Lord is setting us up from our low estate. He's waking us up. First and foremost, he is reviving us spiritually so we remember who we are, that we are the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. 13. And lifted up his head from misery. Mm -hmm. So that many that saw it marveled at him. You see what the Bible is saying? And lifted up his head from misery. Because as a people, without God's commandments, we're miserable. Understand that? Without God's laws, we are miserable people. Look at us as a nation. We are miserable as a people. You understand? Our people is always complaining. we always mad. we always sad. we always confused. we lost. Everything we say don't make no sense. Why? Because we are miserable because we are no longer keeping God's commandments. We forgot our God, so we forgot who we are. You understand? We forgot our owner. We forgot our identity, where we come from. You understand? What makes us great? We forgot all that. That's why he is saying, and lifted up his head from misery. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15 and verse 13. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verses 13. Come on. For this man, that of earthly matter, maketh brittle vessels and graven images. Knoweth himself to offend above all others. You see that thing? So because guess what? We worshiping I, our, as a nation, our the, the 12 tribes of Israel, we are in captivity now, and what are we doing? Worshipping idols, graven images. You understand? Go ahead. And all, and all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection are most foolish 
and mm -hmm. are more miserable than very, than very babes. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, all, and all the enemies of thy people. The enemies of our people is what? It's talking about the nations and it's talking about heathen-minded Israelites, our people that support master, our people, the clueless black leaders that have no clue what they're doing. They are lost. They are confused. So they're also, they are the enemies of our people. You understand? Because they don't care about the nation of Israel. They don't love the people. Okay? That's why it says, and all the enemies of thy people that hold them in subjection, hold what in subjection? Graven images. You understand? It says, are most foolish. They're dumb as hell. That's what the Lord is saying. It says, and are more miserable than very babes. Meaning they are miserable than children. A child is miserable. You understand? That's why when you born baby, they're always crying. When they want to eat, they cry. You understand? When they poop on themselves, they pee, they cry. They want to sleep, they cry. You see that thing? They are, a child is miserable. So the most High God is saying, as a nation, we're like that. Miserable. Because we're what? Worshipping graven images. Next verse. Go ahead. 15. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. You see that thing? He says, as a people, we counted all the idols of the heathens to be gods. That's our people. They worship white Jesus. Some of our people, they are into Scientology. Some of our people is atheists. Some of our people, they are into Pentecostal. You understand? Jehovah's Wickedness, Seven-Day Disadvantage, Lutheran. You understand? Dutch Reformed and all that. Some of, some of, some of our people, they are into Buddhism. You understand? There are some of our people, they worship Krishna. You understand? The city is in India. Our people scattered over there. Okay, go ahead. Not which neither have the use of eyes to see, no yeah. noses to draw breath, no ears to hear, no fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. Meaning what? They cannot be carried, they cannot see, they cannot hear because they are dumb idols. So as a people, that's why we're miserable now because of that thing. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So go back to Sarah chapter 11. Sarah 11 verse 13. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verses 13. And lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw it marveled at him. You see what the Lord is saying? The Lord says he's, he's lifting up, he's, he's going to lift up our heads from misery. That's what's going on right now. The most high God is lifting up our heads up from misery, from worshiping these idols, because worshiping these idols bring misery and pain, confusion. You understand? So the Lord is saying, I'm going to have mercy upon you. I'm going to lift up your head from misery, okay? So that many that saw it marveled at him, okay? Hold this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Now give me Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. He says, all they that saw him marveled at him. You understand? Because what? Because they saw the strangeness of our salvation. We're looking strange. We're not the same. Why are you dressed like that? You understand? You don't celebrate Christmas no more. No birthdays no more. Even your speech is different. What's going on? Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him mm -hmm. and make no account of his labors. You see that thing? He says, the righteous man sustained in great boldness. That's what we're doing right now. Keeping God's commandments unapologetically so. You understand? He says, before the face of such as afflicted him. All nations are, have afflicted us. All nations are still afflicting us. Guess what? Our own clueless black leaders, they are helping to, they are helping to afford the affliction. Because they are giving our people false hope. They are not telling our people the truth. They don't tell the people what's going on. They don't tell the people that, listen. This politic thing is garbage. This Christianity thing is garbage. This democracy thing is garbage. It's not going to wake our people up. It's not going to do nothing for us. How long have our people been voting? For too long, nothing has changed. Everything is worse than it's ever been. Why? Because of worshiping of idols. That's how people is full of misery and pain. Okay? Read verse 1 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Then right. shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him mm -hmm. and made no account of his labors. 
because my goodness, they don't take us seriously. That's why when you say, listen, keep the commandment, stop voting. Voting is not going to do nothing for you. You understand? Stop going to the Christian church. They're just going to rock you to sleep with white Jesus. They don't want to listen to that. You understand? They don't believe what the Bible is saying. You look at our people, our people don't believe the Bible. Why? Because Christianity is a doctrine of devils. It teaches our people to hate the Bible. That's why when you read the Bible, when we are on the streets, you bring the scriptures out. When the brother or sister comes to ask the question, you give them the answer. They don't want to hear the Bible. When the Bible comes out, they interrupt. Why? Because that's the demonic spirit of Christianity. The demonic spirit of democracy is the same thing. There's no difference. You understand? So that's why it says they made no account of his labors. They don't take us seriously. But they don't understand that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead. Two, when they see it, they shall be troubled with tremble fear and shall be amazed at the strange at the strangeness of a salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. You see what he's saying right there? He says, he says they were troubled with terrible, terrible fear. The, 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 what brings fear to the nation is what? Is us standing righteously, you understand, and boldly so for the laws of God. That's why it says, when they see, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. The nations are not fearful when we join politics and vote. The nations are not fearful when we join democracy, Christian church worshiping white Jesus. That does not bring fear to the nations. When we hate each other, xenophobia, like that, 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 like that clueless, that clueless child born in Tantalax, he's clueless. He don't know what the hell he's doing. He's busy running around with a with soldier uniform. He don't know what the hell he's doing. You understand? But because he knows our people, they trust in man. And they deserve to be led by such babes. They deserve that. You understand? Clueless black Negroes who don't know what the hell they're doing, they deserve to be led by the such people. Because our people don't want to learn. They don't want to return back to this Bible. You bring the Bible, they don't want to hear it because they know the Bible will convict you. The Bible will force you to change. None of these clueless black leaders, they teach the people to change. They still don't get married. You understand? They don't teach their families. They don't take care of their, none of, they don't do none of that stuff. They still smoke weed. They still smoke cigarettes. They still jollering. They are still partaking in jollo. They are going to clubs, committing abortion. They're, you understand, single parent households. Guess what? These so-called black leaders, they are clueless. And our people follow them because they don't tell the people to change. They don't require none of them. Okay? Read us two again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2. When yeah. they see it, they shall be troubled with tremble fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so mm -hmm. far beyond all that they looked for. You see that thing? Meaning it's going to be beyond what they look for. Whatever they imagine was what's going on, they have no idea what's about to happen. You understand? So let's go back. Let's go back to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Read verse 13 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 13. Go ahead. And lifted up his head from misery, so that many that saw it marveled at him. You see that thing? So that many that saw it marveled at him. Why? Because of the strangeness of our salvation. That can only happen if we are led by those leaders that are keeping God's commandments and teaching God's laws, how to repent, how to get your mind right, how to be a man, how to be a woman, how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a righteous daughter of the Most High God, how to be a righteous son of the Lord. Only when we do that, then the Most High God will deal with us. You understand? When we are moving with his spirit, okay? We don't. Come on. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. You see that thing? So we want prosperity. We, adversity is brought by the Lord. Life and death. The most High God is responsible for that thing. Poverty and riches come of the Lord. The reason why you see us struggling as a nation is because we hate instruction. Give me Proverbs 14, 23. Because we don't want to keep God's commandments. Okay? Really, give me Proverbs 13, verse 18. Then we're going to read Proverbs 14, 23. Read that. Come on. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18. Read. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Uh -huh. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. 
do that thing. They are, we are going to be honored when we regard reproof. Reproof of what? God's laws. Because God's commandment is about correction. So when we are corrected with God's commandments, we're going to get our minds right. Then we will receive the kingdom of heaven on earth. The reason why we are impoverished, the reason why we are covered with shame as a nation is because we hated instruction. We refuse the Bible. You understand? That's why people are in all manner of philosophies and, and, and men, the imaginations of men. They don't know what's going on. You understand? Now, Proverbs 14, 23, read that. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. Mm -hmm. In all labor, there is profit, but the talk of the lips tended only to pay penury. Punary. It says, all to, in all labor, there is profit. When we labor to keep the commandments of the Lord to bring forth the kingdom of heaven on earth. It says, in all labor, it says what? It says, verse 20, mm, verse 20 in all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tended only to punitive, meaning what? Extreme poverty. You understand? Because of what? We hating instruction. So the most that God is going to teach us how to get everything that we lost, how to get it back. Okay? Go back to Israel chapter 11. Now read verse 4, read verse 15. Watch this. This is what we must pray to the most that God to do for us this day. Read that. Israel 11, 15. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 15. Go ahead. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Stop right there. It says wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the law. So if we want to have understanding of the law, we must do what? We must humble down to what the Bible is saying. So the most that God can give us what? Can give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You understand? We can be able to understand what it is that we need to do in this Bible to bring our nation back together. You understand? Because our people, they are trusting in, again, clueless black Negroes who are called leaders of our people. They are not leaders. You understand? Those, those are just children with money. It doesn't matter how old they are. They are just children with money. Starting from what? There's the presidents. You understand? Who's former chief justice, Mohwe Mohwe. These are just children with money. They are clueless. You understand? That's why they are leading our people astray. And our people keep trusting in them. Those are not the leaders of the people. You understand? Now watch this. Now, give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Because here's what the Lord said to us. Okay? Here's what the Lord said to us and our people, our forefathers and former, they ignored what the Lord said. Now as a people, look at where we are as a nation. Okay, read that. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this mm -hmm. side, Jordan, in the wilderness. So now Moses was speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel in the wilderness. Now remember, at this point, we're no longer in, under the hands of, of the Egyptians. You understand? We left Egypt. We are in the wilderness at this time. You understand? Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. Stop right there. Now watch this. It says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. We're in the wilderness at this time. And Moses spoke words unto us. Give me Deuteronomy 29, 29. We coming back here. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Let's see the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. All 12 tribes of Israel. What did Moses speak unto us? What was the words that the Moses spoke unto us? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Go ahead. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Come on. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we mm. may do all the words of this law. That we may do what? That we may do all the words of this law that we may do all the words of this law. So the words that Moses spake unto us, go back to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So we understand the words that Moses spake unto all Israel when we were in the wilderness. The Bible is not a fairy tale book. Understand that. We what you got. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. 
So these be the laws which Moses spake unto all Israel when we were in the wilderness. Go ahead. In the plain over against the Red Sea, mm -hmm. between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazaroth and Dizahab. So at this point, we're in the wilderness. We're journeying in the wilderness. You understand? Now watch this. The words which Moses speak unto all Israel, this is what those words say. Give me that in Deuteronomy 11 verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26. These are the words which Moses speak, which Moses speak unto all Israel. Watch this. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 26. Mm -hmm. Behold, I said before you this day a blessing and a curse. Read the verse again, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Behold, I said before you this day a blessing and a curse. So now these are the words which Moses speak unto us when we're in the wilderness. It says, I said before you a, a this day a blessing and a curse. You understand? Read the next verse. Go ahead. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. So the Lord is saying to Moses, say, listen, if you're going to receive a blessing as the 12 tribes of Israel, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. So the most High God, he loves us, but with conditions. He does not have unconditional love. Yeah, his love is conditional. It says, if you obey my word, you will receive a blessing. Okay, go ahead. And a curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, uh -huh. but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go Maybe. after other gods, which ye have not known. You see what he's saying? He says, you're going to receive curses, meaning judgment. He says, I'm going to judge you if you don't obey the commandments of the Lord your God. You understand? He says, how do we, uh, how are we not going to, the Lord says he's going to judge us if you don't obey. The disobedience that Israel would do is what? Is worshipping other gods which you have not known. That's what we're reading here. It says to turn after other gods which you have not known. You see that thing right there? Because guess what? As a nation right now in the lands of our captivity, what is our people doing? Worshipping gods that they know not. That's why now we are under the curses. We are under the judgments. You understand? Now watch this. Let me deal with the with the with the with the blessings for a second. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy twenty-eight. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse one and two. Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse one and two. So these are the blessings that we would receive if we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Watch this. Read it. Deuteronomy twenty-eight verse one. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight verse one. Come on. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You see that thing? He says he will set us on high above all nations of the earth. Meaning what? We're going to rule the earth. We're going to rule the earth. We're going to rule all nations on earth. And we're going to dominate them forever. We're going to teach them and force them God's laws. You understand? So the most High God is telling us, listen, their, your inheritance is to be above all nations on earth. But that could, that's only based on if you keep my commandments. You understand? Read. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You see what he's saying? He says, on all these blessings, remember, it says, you're going to get a, bl a blessing if you shall obey the commandments of the Lord your God. So that's what we're reading. It says, all these blessings will come upon thee and will overtake thee if thou shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. What you need to understand that the most High God is merciful. You understand? Because of the promise that he made to our, or to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Leaders of the people by their knowledge and understanding. That's what we read in Starachy 4 verse 1 through 4. The reason why that is is because our forefathers, they kept the laws perfectly. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why today we have the chance to get the kingdom back. We have a chance to get our planet back. You understand? Because of the covenant that the Lord made with our forefathers. Because they were faithful in all their doings in pleasing the Mosai. 
So we have to walk after their footsteps. I'll give an example. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezra. Okay, give me Ezra 4 verse 20. Okay, an example of when we were in our kingdom, when we ruled the nations on earth. Okay, watch this. I'm giving an example of the blessings that we would receive when we kept God's laws. Read it. Ezra chapter 4 verse 20. Come on. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river and torn. Tribute and custom was paid unto them. So these mighty kings, is talking about King David, King Solomon, you understand? King Josiah, King Hezekiah. These are, these are an example of mighty kings that rule over Jerusalem. King Asa, you understand? These were mighty kings that rule over Jerusalem. And it says, what it says, it says a toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. The nations, they paid us tax. You understand? They paid us tribute. They paid us customs. You understand? And toll was paid unto us. You couldn't come into the land of Jerusalem without paying money to come into our land. You couldn't do that. And all the, the realms that we ruled over, the nations paid us to cross over into other areas, into other lands and, and, and dominions with, that we ruled over. You understand? The nations brought, to, brought, brought their wealth unto us. That's what they did. That's when we was in our kingdoms. And the only reason why we did that is because we kept God's commandments. Okay? Now give me that in Second Chronicles. Okay? Second Chronicles 6. Oh no, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 8. Second Chronicles chapter 8. Let's read verse 7. Second Chronicles 8, verse 7 and 8. Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 8, verse 7. As for all the people that were left of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, which were not of Israel. So now these are the other nations. This, this is listing the the Canaanites, the Hamites, okay? They were not of Israel, right? But of their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel consumed not, them did Solomon make to pay tribute until this day. You see that thing? So we made them, we forced them to pay tax. We were collecting tax from them, you understand? So that's when we were in our kingdom. We didn't pay tax. The reason why we're paying tax today is because why? is because we are slaves. We are in captivity. We are subject to payments. Any type of payment, we are subject to it. You understand? Because of our sins. Now watch this. Give me First Kings 2 verse 11. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Mm -hmm. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and 30 and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. You see that thing? So 40 years David was the king. King David ruled over all Israel, over all 12 tribes of Israel. That's when we, we, when we were in our glory. You understand? We kept the commandments, and the most High God did bless us. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 42. You know what? Before you get me there, give me the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 42. Because we need to understand our forefather, King David. What did he look like? Because our people, when you Google King David, a white man pops up. That's why when you look at the news, the type of deals, the type of um, confederacy that these clueless black leaders are doing, like Rizal Ramaphosa, he, made a, he accepted the letter of... Um, the letter of agreement with the with the Jewish people. He's clueless. He don't know what's going. He don't know his history. He don't know the history of his forefathers. That's why he can blindly make a deal with Amalek. You understand? You see, you see, former Chief Justice Mukwe Mukwe. He's also making just damn and foolish statements about the people. He doesn't even know that those are not the real Jews. You hear these damn black Christians. You know, black Christians are the worst. They are the main ones that say, no, we love Israel. We pray for Jerusalem. They not realizing that they are Jerusalem. Those white people in our land, those are not the real Jews of the Bible. Those people are not the biblical Israelites. Those are the people that stole our land, our culture, our history, and our book. You understand? And they're using the media to push a false narrative that they are the real Jews of the Bible 
which they are not. And because these clueless black leaders, they don't know their history, that's why these nations are able to manipulate them and make them look like fools in the media. But the prophets are back. Understand that. Read that. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 42. Let's see what King David looked like. Okay. Let's see his skin color, his skin tone. You understand? He was a king of Israel. He was a king. He was a ruler of the Jews for 40 years. He was the king of the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's see what he looked like. Read that. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 42. Go ahead. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. Mm -hmm. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. He says, King David was a what? He says, the Philistine, this is the, the Hamite Goliath. He says, he disdained me, he hated his guts. He says, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Because guess what? The most High God put his beauty upon us. We are the most beautiful people on earth. Understand that. Now let's get the definition of the word right. Because it's describing King David's complexion. So or somebody get the Zone 11 Complex Bible Dictionary. You understand? Get the definition of the word right. Get that real quick. Okay. Where's the Bible? Where was the Zone 11 Bible Dictionary? Let's get that. Really? Reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 510, the definition of the word ruddy. Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. So In usually, hold on, usually, that word meaning is letting you know that that word is used incorrectly. Because what they've done is that they, they mean to say that the word ruddy means red. No, I don't mean that. He's going to tell you what the word ruddy means. Keep reading. Go ahead. In contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. You see that thing? You see what the word ruddy means? The word ruddy means what? The word ruddy means black. The dark skin of the Hebrews. So King David was a Hebrew. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You understand? So King David was a black man. Understand that thing, okay? And he was from the tribe of Judah, okay? Now watch this. Give me that in Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Read that. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Let's see what the Jews look like. Because King David is from the tribe of Judah. He was a king of Israel. You understand? Ruling in Hebron. Okay? With his Kejath, band, Kejath Abba. Read what you got. Come on. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Read it. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Go ahead. Judah mourned, mm -hmm. and the gates thereof languished. Well, they are black unto the ground. He says the Jews are black unto the ground. The reason why you see today those Jewish people in our land calling themselves Israelis because they are not the Israelites. They are not the sons and daughters of Jacob. Those are the children of Edom. Those are the children of Eliphaz. Those are the, those are the, the descendants of the bastard child of Eliphaz. Eliphaz is a son. You understand? Those are not the children of Israel. So what we're reading here, that's why you see them, they were black, they always were in black, is because in their minds, they are trying to fulfill the scripture when it says they are black unto the ground. Because they are clueless, they are misled, they don't understand because those are converts. And guess what? People like Wesel Ramaphosa, which former Chief Justice Mokwe Mokwe, they don't know that history. They are confused and they are lost. They don't understand what's going on. That's why they can blindly make deals with Amalek. You understand? They, don't, they have no idea what's going on. But we, the prophets in the spirit of Christ, we're going to bring all things to our remembrance. You understand? Our people must know this truth before the Lord returns. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 42. Because remember, we're going over the blessings, you understand, if we keep God's commandments. And those blessings that we never pay tax, we rule all nations on earth. And the nations pay paid us tax. The nations brought brought unto us their wealth, which is really our wealth because the whole earth was made for us. You understand? Now read that. First Kings chapter 11, verse 42. This is in the time of King Solomon. Okay, read it. First Kings chapter 11, verse 42. Go ahead. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. 
So King Solomon ruled over Jerusalem for 40 years. You understand? Over all 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? And during King Solomon's reign, watch this. Give me Sarah 47. Ecclesiasticus. Sarah chapter 47, verse 13. During King Solomon's rulership, give, give, during King Solomon's reign, there was peace on earth. Understand that? Read that. Sarah 47, verse 13. This is letting you know that when the 12 tribes of Israel, when we rule the earth, there's going to be peace on earth. Right now, there's no peace on earth because the 12 tribes of Israel were not in our rulership yet. The Mosai is still gathering us together on the four corners of the earth where we are scattered through colonization, forced migration. You understand? Read that. Sarah 47, verse 13. Come on. Ecclesiasticus chapter 47, verse 13. Read. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time. You see that? And King was Solomon honored. ruled. Hold on. King Solomon ruled in a peaceable time. When this is letting you know, when the 12 tribes of Israel rule, there will be peace on earth. Read. And was honored. Mm -hmm. For God made all quiet round about him, that he might build an house in his name and prepare his sanctuary forever. Go ahead, come on. How wise was thou in thy youth and because as a flood? Hold on. It says, how, was, how wise was thou in thy youth? Because the most high God bestowed upon King Solomon the knowledge and wisdom that we read about in this Bible. Go ahead. How wise was thou in thy youth and as a flood filled with understanding? Read. Really? Come on. Thy soul covered the whole earth and thou fillest it with dark parables. Because King Solomon was a wise king. He was the wisest king of Israel. Go ahead. Thy name went far unto the islands and for thy peace thou was beloved. Because during, that, the, during his rule, time of rulership, there was peace. You understand? There was peace because King David, during his time of rulership, he was putting all the nations to death. He was putting all the nations in check. So that by the time his son is coming to, into power to rule, there will be peace on earth. So we can build the temple and be in our glory. You understand? Go ahead. The countries marveled at thee for thy songs mm -hmm. and prophecy. It says, the countries marveled at thee for thy songs. Read. And proverbs. Mm. And parables and interpretations. You see what he's saying right there? So the most High God, he made sure that he bestowed upon King Solomon the all wisdom, all knowledge and understanding. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. By the name. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Ecclesiasticus chapter 47. Verse 18. Read. By the name of the Lord God, which is called the Lord God of Israel, thou didst gather gold as tin and didst mm -hmm. multiply silver as lead. Because we was wealthy. We were wealthy. The nations, they paid us tax. And King Solomon made sure he imposed tax on all these nations that we ruled over. And we rule the earth. We rule the whole planet earth. You understand? During that time. Even during the time of King David. All the nations that were afraid of us, you understand? When we kept the, I'm giving an example of when we took over, when we ruled, the nations were kept in check and we was wealthy and the nations paid us tax. They brought what silver and gold very much unto us. You understand? Because the most high God was with us. Now watch this. Give me that in Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Let's see what King, David, King Solomon looks like. You understand? We have established that King David is a black man. Let's see his son, King Solomon. Let's see if it's recorded in the Bible. Okay, read that. Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. You know what? Start at verse 1. Because verse 1 tells you that King Solomon is the one that wrote this book. We read it in Sirach 47. You understand? Sirach 47, verse 17. Okay. Read Sirach 47, verse 17 before we get Song of Solomon 1 and 1. Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, verse 17. Go ahead. The countries marveled at thee for thy songs. And for thy what? For thy songs. He says, the country marveled, the countries marveled at thee for thy song. That's where Song of Solomon, that's why Song of Solomon is written. That's what he's making, he's referencing Song of Solomon. That's what he's referencing right there. 
You understand? He says, the countries marveled at thee for thy songs. The song of Solomon. Now go back to Song of Solomon 1 and 1. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. The song of songs, which is Solomon's. You see that thing? The song of songs, which is Solomon's. Because King Solomon wrote this book. Because in the Christian church, they are trying to say, they are saying, no, a black woman wrote this. And that black woman was an Egyptian woman. That's garbage. That's not biblical. They cannot substantiate that in the scriptures anyway. The reason why they do that is so that we cannot, because they know that now as we're waking up as the Israelites, we are using the scriptures to bring our people back to their remembrance of who they are, to connect our people back to this Bible. But you have these clueless black Negroes who are so-called leaders who are saying, including the pastors, including the presidents, they be following the popes. They be worshiping the Roman Catholic Church. Hmm? The same people that enslaved us during the, the, the Portuguese Inquisition, the Roman Inquisition, you understand, and the Spanish Inquisition. They are following the same people that enslaved us during the time when we ruled Spain and Portugal as the Moors under Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. They did that, you understand, under the Spanish Amara. But they are still following that because our people, they are clueless. And the masses of our people, they follow these clueless black leaders who don't know nothing, okay? Now read verse five, come on. Song of Solomon chapter one, verse five. Go ahead. I am black. I am black. But come. This is King Solomon. Remember, King Solomon wrote the Song of Songs. The Song of Solomon is written by King Solomon. It was not written by a black Egyptian woman. Like that T.D. Jakes was saying. Go ahead. I am black, but calmly. I am black and I'm beautiful. Go ahead. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. The daughters of Jerusalem. As the tents. Hold on. The daughters of Jerusalem is the 12 tribes of Israel. The daughters of Jerusalem is the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, I am black, but comely, all ye daughters of Jerusalem. Meaning just like the 12 tribes of Israel, I look like that. Go ahead. As the tents of Kedar, mm -hmm. as the curtains of Solomon. So now watch this. Give me, go back to, now go back to, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 27. Now let's read that again. So we understand, we're coming back now to the curses because the law says, you break my commandments, uh, you, you keep my laws, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to exalt you above all nations on earth. You're not going to pay tax. You're not going to do none of that. The nations will what? The nation will save you. Now watch this. When we broke the commandments, here's what happens to us. Read it. You told me chapter 11, verse 27. Read verse 28. Let's get to the curses now. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 28. Read. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Come on. But turn aside out of the way which I command you to stay, to go mm -hmm. after other gods which ye have not known. You see that thing? So when we, the curses will only be brought upon us when we stop worshiping the most high God and start worshiping other gods. Because that's exactly what we did. Now as a people, we've been in captivity ever since. After King Solomon, King David, King Josiah, you understand, Hezekiah, guess what? We went, our forefathers were taken by the Assyrians, Northern Kingdom. Then Babylon came and took Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the rest of the, the nine tribes into captivity. You understand? And we've been in slavery ever since. Right now, we are in captivity under America, Babylon the Great. Now, what's this? Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 33. Because I'm going to show you what the Lord did to us. Because we read this all the time, but some of you, you take this for granted. I want to show you something with these verses. Pay close attention. Okay, read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land mm -hmm. and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. He says, we are going to be only oppressed and crushed always. Now, what you want to notice here says, it says the fruit of thy land. So which means we had land, we had resources upon that land. You understand? So the most High God, he said, because of you broke my laws, somebody else is going to come and take your land and the fruits that are sitting upon that land. What is the fruit of the land? The gold, the diamond, the platinum. You understand? 
the uranium, you understand? The diamonds, okay? The minerals, that goes into mineral resources. The fruits and vegetables, you understand? It goes into that as well. It goes into what? It also goes into the animals that the Lord will give us, the, the most that God will give unto us for us to own. You understand? The elephants, we get ivory from that. You understand? Goat hair, fur, mink, all of that. The most that God says, I'm gonna, then another nation is gonna take those things away from you. That's what the most that God is saying right there. Okay, read again, verse 33. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You see that thing? And all thy labors. So somebody will come and take your land. They'll take, they take, they take the land from you. They kick you out the land. They take the fruits of your land and they make you laborers upon that land to reap the resources of the land to give to them in your presence. That's what the Lord is saying. And it says, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So now, instead of investigating what the hell happened, you know what our, these clueless black leaders do? They make deals with them. They're not investigating what the hell happened. And when you start to rebel, look at what happened to Gaddafi. When Gaddafi rebelled, said, no, 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 no. We own the resources. So we're going to create one currency on the continent. And all these nations, they have to trade based on our currency because we got the resources upon this land. Guess what happened? Other black, other clueless black leaders, they said to hell with that. We don't want that. We want to be attached to master because master is taking care of us because they don't see the big picture. And none of these clueless black leaders stood up when Gaddafi was being humiliated and put to death on national television. They did nothing. They said nothing. They didn't do nothing. Where was Muramapos? Where was Wumbeki? They said they kept quiet. None of them said nothing. You understand? They did not say anything because they hate their own people. That's what I'm trying to show you. They don't give a damn about their people. Okay? Read again verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Wait. The fruit of thy land and mm -hmm. all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and yes. thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You shall be only oppressed and crushed always. Right now, as a people, we are oppressed. How are we being oppressed? Because the land will be taken from us. The resources upon those lands will be taken from us. And we're going to work for the fruit of our land on the land that belong to us. And we'll never get to reap the fruits or the benefits of the fruits of the land. Now our, our children are, are, are suffering. They are growing up in poverty. You understand? Our forefathers work in mines, but they don't own no gold, no diamond, no platinum, no uranium, no nothing. You understand? Because the most high God says he will do this to us for breaking God's commandments. That's why the nations were able to come together. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Go back to Lamentations 4. We're going to read verse 15 and 16 now. Watch this. Lamentations chapter 4, verse uh, 15 and 16. Watch this. Read what you got. Okay, come on. You know what? Start of verse 14. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 14. Go ahead. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. Mm -hmm. They have polluted themselves with blood yeah. so that men could not touch their garments. You see what the Bible is saying? It says they've wandered as blind men in the streets. That's us as a nation. And guess what? Because the blind is leading the blind because nobody understands what's going on. You understand? Because they don't want to open the Bible and read and learn something. So now it says as a people, our people are wandering as blind men in the streets. And they, these clueless black leaders, they are blind. They have no, they don't, they have no, they don't have a clue what to do or what's going on. That's why these other nations are able to manipulate them. They play them like the piano. You understand? Give me that in uh, Proverbs 21, 16. It says, we're wandering as blind men in the streets. You understand? We're wandering. Okay. We are blind because we are spiritual. As spiritually, those so-called clueless, these clueless black leaders, they are, they are, they are, their eyes are closed. And when they come across people like us, 
they will not hear anything we have to say because they don't want to hear what the Bible got to say because they know in their spirits, they have to change. Read that, Proverbs 21, 16. Read it. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Come on. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the day. You see that thing? Because we wandered out of the way of understanding of this Bible, now we are in the congregation of the dead as a nation. We're spiritually dead. You understand? We're spiritually dead. We're spiritually blind. We're spiritually deaf. And we dumb too as a people. Why? Because we rejected God's laws. So now it says we're wandering as blind men in the streets. You see that thing right there? So go back. Lamentations 4.14. So these so-called leaders, they are clueless. Now I'm going to show you that. Keep reading. Read that, Lamentations 4.14. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. They have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. That they polluted themselves with blood. But what are they doing? They are making deals at the expense of their people. You understand? They're making deals with China. So China, China will do what? What does China do? China will give them foreign aid and guess what happens after that? What happens after that is that now these countries, South Africa, Ghana, Congo, Guinea, you understand? Now they are indebted now. Now we are in debt. So now we enter the what is called the debt trap. Now we are in debt. We are trapped under debt because of what? Because of these wicked deals that these clueless black leaders are making. You see that they, they polluted themselves with blood, the blood of their people, so that men could not touch their gun because they are wicked as hell. Go ahead. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 15. Come on. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. Mm -hmm. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. You see what he's saying? Because it, it says, they cried unto them. Who, who is crying unto these two less black leaders? The prophets. The prophets are the ones that are crying unto these black leaders to get their minds right. And the people that follow them with the word of God. It says, we're telling them, depart. Don't make deals with them. You understand? It is unclean. Depart, depart, touch not. Meaning don't get involved in their business deals because you're only going to find yourself in trouble at the expense of your nation. He says, when they fled away and wandered, meaning they fled away towards the heathens and they wandered among them. You understand? He says, they said among the heathen, they shall no more sojourn there. Meaning what? They are no longer going to sojourn among their own people, but they'll sojourn among the heathens because the heathens are looking after them. They don't care about the people. That's why when you see all these clueless black leaders, when they are voted into office, they don't do nothing for their people. You understand? Because now, I think it's in March. March is going to be sharp deal, I think, when they're going to celebrate and commemorate what happened during the time in 1960, the Sharpeville massacre. There was a woman, our mother, in Sharpeville, and they were interviewing her. You know what she said? She said, Ramaphosa only comes during this time. But after that, the whole year does not come. He only comes once a year on that day to give a speech, and he goes. That woman was saying that, our mother, you understand? It was a painful thing to see because they don't give a damn about their people. You understand? Keep reading. The anger of the Lord has divided them. You see that thing? Will not now the anger of the Lord allowed us to be divided among these nations. Politics, religion, Christianity, democracy. You understand? Right? He will no more regard them. Mm -hmm. They respected not the persons of the priests. They mm -hmm. favored not the elders. Because they didn't give a damn about the priests. Because the priests came with the law. The elders came with counsel. Because those were the leaders of Israel. They didn't want to listen to that stuff. That's why you see our people today that are in the Christian church, they are taught to hate the Bible because the Bible is a book of law and order. And because they are taught that the laws of God are done away with, that's our people, when they hear the Bible, they reject it not realizing that they are rejecting their inheritance. And that, that is what's going on. That's why you see people like Burama Posa, they can make deals with those Jewish people, you understand, in our land today, calling themselves Israelis, which they are not the real Jews. They can 
blindly make those those deals and guess what they are commanded by these um the the they're commanded by they are commanded by these jewish people because i see them on the news and etv that that demonic channel etv is always airing these type of things when when the former chief justice mohuen mohuen um he was making a speech and say he loves israel and all of that you know how many jewish amalek people came and commanded him for what he did because they were just looking at him look at this fool right here you don't know he is the real people we stole your history you clueless black man they just laughed at us you understand but we bring in the flavor back understand that now watch this give me Read the verse again, verse 16. I'm going to show you something with this thing. Okay. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. The anger of the Lord has divided them. Stop right he there. will no more. The Hold on. The anger of the Lord had divided them. How? How is the anger of the Lord divided us? Guess what? When during the during the 1800s with the Berlin Conference, you understand? With Otto von Bismarck, with the 13 European nations, you understand? They came together on how to rob us. And they divided the continent up, you understand, to take the best pieces of the continent because there's best resources on this continent. You understand? So the most High God allowed this nation to divide us during the Berlin Conference and to divide us during when they were giving us Bantu stands and they were giving us Bantu education. That's why they, they divided us by language and by culture. That's what they did. That's why now as a people we're divided as ever. You understand? Because of why? Because we are no longer moving in the spirit of Christ. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, give me the book. Go back to Deuteronomy 20, verse 33. Then we're going to go to second Esdras. Okay? I'm going to switch gears now. Just pay attention. Deuteronomy 20, verse 33. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Come on. The fruit of thy land mm -hmm. and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and Come thou on. shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Because right now we are oppressed and we are crushed always. We are, we are, we are oppressed spiritually, mentally, and physically, and we are crushed. Wherever you start to try to say something, they silence you. Look at what they did to former Chief Justice Mokwe Mokwe. He, he was very vocal about what he was saying about Israel and all that, against Palestine and all that. Guess what? They made him to apologize. They put him in his place because that's what they do. You understand? Because our people, although they are the presidents, they are the chief justices and all of that, they are still kids. They're behaving like kids. They are scared. They are afraid. You understand? They are still treating them like kids. That's what you want. That's what you That's what I want you men and women to understand. You understand? Now watch this. Give me a second. That's 1646. Second Esdras, 16, verse 46. Let's read that. Second Esdras, chapter 16, verse 46. Read. For strangers shall reap their fruits. Stop right there. The strangers is the nations that we know not into 2028, verse 33. Those are the strangers, the aliens. The strangers is these other nations, the Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, you understand? Now, the, the Americans, the Europeans, now who's following now? China. China is partaking in this. You understand? Because China, everything that America does, China does it as well. I'm going to prove that. Hold that. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 15 now. 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 46. Watch this. Everything that America does, China is following right along because they want, to work, they want to do what America does. America is conquering. America conquered the continent of Africa. You understand? They're conquering. They're having powerful influence over all nations on earth. Not only that, they don't want to leave the continent of Africa. You understand? Because there's resources here. That's how they survive. That's how they're able to build their war machines, their nuclear bombs and weapons. Where do they get the material to build these weaponry from? They get it from the continent, the mineral resources that they get from here. So China's doing the same thing. They are also building military bases on the continent. Watch this. Read that. Second Exodus chapter 15. Okay. Verse 46. Read that. Second Exodus chapter 15, verse 46. 
and thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon and art the glory of a person. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 46. Mm -hmm. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon Stop and like art that. the glory. Hold on. It says, and thou, Asia. It says, thou art the what? Thou Asia. Read that again. Uh -huh. And thou, Asia, thou art partaker of the hope of Babylon. Now, at the partaker of the hope of Babylon. So, Asia, guess what? They, they want to, they, they said they are the partakers of the hope of Babylon. So, everything that America does, China, Japan, you know, all the Asian countries, they want to follow after them. They want to follow right behind them. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And at the glory of a person. Read. Woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. You see that thing? It says China, India, they've made themselves like unto America because those are A A A Asian countries. You understand? It says, woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Because that's what America, that's what China's doing. Particularly China, not India, not so much. Because India, yeah, they are doing that, but not like the way that China is doing it. Okay, go ahead. And has decked thy daughters in hordom. You see that thing? The they have decked their daughters in hordom. If you look at the Chinese women, look at China. Look at the so-called Chinese Americans. Look at the way they dress. They bleach their skin. You understand? They wear two-piece suit. They wear mini skirts and all that. They are following what America does. Go ahead. That they might please and glory in thy lovers. You see which that have thing? always... That, hold on. He said that they may what? That they might please and glory in thy lovers. Mm -hmm. Right? Which have always desire to commit, to commit hoarding with thee. You see that thing right there? It says, which have always desired to commit hoarding with thee. So it says, China always desired to commit hoarding with America. So what is the hoarding? China wants to be in everybody's land too. But particularly the land that China wants to dominate in, what land is that? The continent. The continent. That's what they're doing right now. You understand? Understand that thing. Okay, go ahead. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. And Therefore, what? say it for her. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. You see that part right there? It says, thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. Who's hated? America, Babylon the Great, the Great Hall. It says, he hated in all her works and inventions. That's why China tries to be like America in the what in the technological sense. Russia is wants to be like America in the what in the military sense. Because Russia is part of Asia, so Russia wants try, is is trying to be like America in the military sense. China is trying to be like America in the what in the economic and business sense. Technology. That's why you see most of the gadgets and so forth made in China, made in China, because they are trying to be like unto America. Russia is doing the same thing. You understand? Is doing the same thing. Now watch this. Let me let me play this video so you can see. Okay, we're gonna go back to second as a sixteen because I've not forgotten. I just wanna touch on something. Today we'll talk about Africa, once seen by Europe as the antithesis of civilization, the heart of darkness, in the words of a certain Joseph Conrad. Centuries later, Africa remains ignored. It makes news for its conflicts, poverty, and exoticism. For the longest time, the world saw it as a lost cause. Then one country saw opportunity and thus began a new race for Africa, not very different from the scramble of the 19th century when colonial Britain and France wanted raw materials, slaves, and geopolitical influence. Now in the 21st century, global powers are in more or less the same race. 
China, the United States, India, the European Union, Japan, Israel, Canada as the clear winner. I just want to show these you. These countries look at, are in the race for Africa. Look at what these nations. You've got Canada, US, Israel, which is what? Amalek. Because the real people, the people of the land are not there. They are, we are scattered all over all the earth. You've got the European Union. You've got China. You've got India. You've got Japan. You see China, India, Japan. That's part of Asia. You understand? Then you've got Israel, which is Amalek is over there. You've got the European Union with the EU. You've got Canada. You've got the United States of America. You understand? All of them, they are rushing to the continent of Africa because that's where it's happening. But the inhabitants of the land, we are impoverished. Great poverty. You understand? And one country is emerging as the clear mm -hmm. winner. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. And this is Africa, a continent of 54 sovereign states. 17% of the world's population, 9.6% of the global oil output, 90% of the world's platinum supply, 90% of the world's cobalt supply, mm. half of the world's gold supply, two-thirds of the world's manganese, 35% of the world's uranium, 75% of the world's coltan, and 54 votes in the United Nations General Assembly. This is what makes Africa so attractive. Because of the minerals. The reason why these nations, all these countries, these nations of the earth, they are attracted to the continent is because of the mineral resources that are upon the land. That's why the Mosa God allowed them to divide us among them so that they can what they can they they divided us. You have to make sure that we don't get along, but they rob us collectively. Okay. The continent, a battleground for global powers. There are numerous fronts, investment and infrastructure, military power, diplomacy, soft power, trade, geopolitics. Every country has its own interest in Africa. In 2016, Israel began its scramble for the continent. Benjamin Netanyahu See that? became... That's Netanyahu right there. That's, that's Kenyatta on the right, you understand, of Kenya. You see what he's doing? He went to, he's going to Kenya now to do what? He wants the mineral resources down there. The first Israeli Prime Minister to visit Africa in 50 years. What did he want? Votes. Mm. In favor of Israel and against Palestine in the United Nations. That's, it, that's what they did with Ramaphosa. But Ramaphosa is playing it safe. He's making it seem like he's not against, um, he's not against uh, pal the Palestinians. He's making it, he's making it seem like he's not against the Palestinians because of what, what former Chief Justice Mukwen Mukwen said. It, made, it, it, would, it would paint a picture that they are against Palestine. You understand? That's why they forced the clueless Negro to apologize. You understand? While we was doing that, guess what Ramaphosa was doing? Ramaphosa was, was uh, receiving and accepting the letter of credence from the, from the Israeli uh, ambassador who came with his wife. He, had, he, he what? I'm going to show you the videos, what he did. You understand? He made sure that he cements the business deals or and the and the political geopolitical um, agreements with Amalek. Okay. Africa and Israel share similar histories, he said. Israel went on to sponsor solar, water, and agricultural technologies. In the same year, 2016, Senegal co-sponsored a UN resolution. It condemned the construction of illegal Jewish settlements in the West mm. Bank. What did Israel do? It cancelled the Mashav drip irrigation project. What they did? And this is when they did not want to support their initiatives because they were what? Remember what they are doing in Israel. They are kicking our people out of that land. You understand? And there were settlements in the West Bank. They were what? They started to say, no, 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 we're going to cancel all that. You understand? Because Benjamin Netanyahu, he was not in agreement that people must build houses in the West Bank. And guess what? These African presidents, they were in agreement. Yeah, people, of course, they must settle there. Guess what he did? The deal that he made with Kenya and so forth, Uganda, he said, no, 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 we're canceling that because now you are against us. You see that thing? So Ramaphosa, they're going to do him the same way. If he gets out of line, they're going to cancel any deal that he's got. Just one example. Here's another one. The European Union has pledged more than $54 billion in sustainable investment for Africa. What does the EU want? 
access to the African market of 1.3 billion mm. people. Brussels has negotiated free trade agreements with at least 40 African countries. But does this ensure a balanced two-way trade? It doesn't. And no country has a bigger interest in Africa than China. Here we go. Moab. That's what we're reading about here in 2nd Genesis chapter 15. Moab. Okay. China is funding one in five infrastructure projects in Africa. It is building every third one. Africa has an infrastructure deficit and China has a signed checkbook. Starting 2005, China has invested at least $2 trillion in Africa. It built 6,200 kilometers of railways, including the continent's longest railway line connecting Ethiopia and Djibouti. Beijing has also built the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. What does China get in return? A lot. Geopolitical influence to start with. Beijing is selling its culture, its currency. In Guinea-Bissau, exit signs are written mm. in Mandarin. China has established at least 50 Confucius Institutes across 33 countries. Several African countries use Chinese currency. China also gets a strategic overseas base. In 2017, China built its first overseas base at the Horn of Africa, Djibouti to be specific. Djibouti connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Indian Ocean via the Suez Canal. The base has the capacity to accommodate 10,000 troops. China also gets a market to dump its goods. China is Africa's largest trading partner. Chinese trade has increased 40-fold in the last two decades. At least 10,000 Chinese firms operate in Africa. This is according to a McKinsey study. Africa has resources and China has access. Did you know that a third of China's investments in Africa are in the mining sector? You see that right there? Are uh, in the mining sector. What do they want? Re mine, they want the, what they want, the fruits of the land. That's what they're looking for. But you notice that it says, wherever China's making uh, uh, business deals, is investing, is pouring money into the continent, it says now they are bringing their culture, they are bringing their language, you understand? And they are bringing their institutes where they are going to be teaching in Mandarin. Watch this. Remember what we read. It says, China, Asia, is partaking of these partakers of the hope of Babylon. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. I'm going to show you. You see, what Chinese are doing, they are following after the footsteps of America. Okay, watch this. You told me to read verse 49. Because I remember uh, in Cape Town, they wanted to start to implement Mandarin in schools in Cape Town. Read that. You told me to read verse 49. Okay, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle fly, Wait. a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that part right there? A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Why? Because when they come with their, with their so-called investments, you understand? No, we want to civilize you as if we're not, we're not already civilized. Guess what? They come with their culture too. They come with their language. Because that's how the Greeks did things. That's how the Romans did things. Guess what? That's what China is doing things today because they are following after the footsteps of who? The Great Hall, America. You understand? The reason why I'm touching on that is because I'm trying to show you um, when it says the nations, um, the nations that will conquer us, they're going to what? They're going to take the fruits of our land. They're going to take the land as well. They will divide us, but they will rob us collectively. America is on the forefront doing that. These, these clueless black leaders, they're making deals with America, Europe, and China. That's why I brought China into this mix. You understand? And finally, it gets to debt trap That's Africa. Right there. But here's the thing. China is not the only the country. Debt, trap. debt. Now we have to pay billions and billions of dollars. Because remember, it says they invested, what, 2 trillion US dollars on the continent. How much do you think they're going to want to, they're going to want back? Are we going to be able to pay it back? No, we will not be able to pay that money back. So what do they get in return? They get resources. They get the gold, the diamond, the platinum. You understand? So, but what they're getting in return is a hundred times more than the amount of money that they gave us. Investing in this continent, it's not even the biggest. The United States is Africa's largest investor. It accounts for $54 billion of FDI stock. There are 600 American companies operating in South Africa alone. And this, even after the US president called Africa this. 
For the longest time, Africa was nothing but a war zone for Washington. It has over 7,000 troops deployed in the continent. They are spread across some 13 African countries, including Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, South Sudan, Somalia, and Tunisia. For the U.S., Africa was a continent for counter-terrorism operations. What happened then? Why is the U.S. suddenly interested in Africa? The answer is this. For the U.S., Africa is now a new front to take on China, and Washington is now fighting it out for power and influence. Mm. An article on the U.S. State Department website reads, and I quote, Africa is the continent of the future. Thus, we need to make the most of its potential. By 2050, its population will more than double to 2.2 billion people with over 60% under the age of 25. Where is Africa's interest in all of this? Mm. Also, what about India? What role does India play in this continent? New Delhi's ties with Africa date back to the time of Mahatma Gandhi. India was part of the Bandung project of 1955. New Delhi supported Africa's anti-colonial struggles. It supported the liberalization movements in Ghana, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau. India also raised the issue of racism in South Africa. It will be unfair to say, though, that India's newfound interest in Africa has nothing to do with China. In 2018, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi toured key African states just ahead of Chinese President Xi Jinping. He did that thing. He met with the president of, he met with Ramaphosa. And you see who's that? That's the president of Uganda. That's Museveni. That's Museveni right there at the bottom. This is Museveni right here. You understand? He's meeting with key African lead, so-called leaders. You understand? So remember, he says Asia. You've got Russia, you've got India, you've got China, you've got Japan. Visit. In 2018, India decided to open 18 new embassies in Africa. India has defense partnerships with Zambia, Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, Botswana, Uganda, Mozambique and Namibia. Mm. New Delhi is currently training African military. Indian company Airtel is a dominant telecom firm in Africa. New Delhi is offering 50,000 scholarships to African students. Despite everything, India is far behind China in the race for Africa. China's Belt and Road Initiative has sealed its hold on Africa. If in the 1900s, Africa was colonized with force, in 2020, it is being trapped by loans. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Because when he says the 19th century, talk about the 1800s, the Berlin Conference, the scramble for the continent, you understand? So now they are in, we've entered into the debt trap. New colonial masters with new deals and new rules, with new business deals, new agreements. And guess what, Ram? These clueless black leaders, who Ramaphosa, you understand? Who Chief Justice Mohwe Mohwe, who, 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 um, Musimai Man, who, who, where was this guy? Who black like me? Mashal. They are clueless. They don't know what the hell they do. You understand? They don't know what the hell they are doing. But today, I'm dealing with Ramaphosa and Chief Justice Mokwe Mokwe, former Chief Justice, okay? Now, that's it on that, okay? Let's go back, all right? Let's go back. Give me, go back to second Ezra now, 16 verse 46. Let's go back there. Read what you got. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 46. Go ahead. For strangers shall reap their fruits and mm -hmm. spoil their fruits. You see that thing? Strangers shall reap their fruits. That's why China says is investing more in mining. And guess what America is doing? America, they are also what? They are investing in that. They want to take on China. But America is ruling all nations on earth. You understand? So yeah, they do have a fight, but not, not so much. But the point is, our clueless black Negroes, so-called leaders, guess what they're doing? They are making deals with who, whosoever will be able to give them the money. Because they also see how they are benefiting. And I'm not talking about benefiting in terms of the country, mm -mm. benefiting in terms of personal gains. The deals they make with these countries is what? Is mostly, more importantly, about they are driven by personal gain rather than the benefit of the people in the country. That's why our people are so impoverished because we are, they are, we are led by what? Clueless black Negroes. You understand? Go ahead. Overthrow their houses. Overthrow our houses. Because guess what? They reap our fruits. You understand? They spoil our goods. Guess what? They, 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 they steal from us and then they, they spoil our goods. Because remember, we, have, we had houses, we had lands, 
we have resources. So they take everything that we got, they take it back to their countries, they process it, they send it back to us. You understand? Go ahead. And take their children captives. Read. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. I'm going to deal with that in a second. Go ahead. Verse 47. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, mm -hmm. they, the more they take their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. You see what they did? It says they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. What is the merchandise? That's the fruits in verse 46. That's the merchandise, the gold, the platinum, the uranium. You understand? All these mineral resources that we've got, they he says they occupy them by robbery. The more they deck their cities, they decorate their cities with the merchandise that they robbed us off of. You understand? It says they decorate their houses as well, their possessions, and their own persons. That's why they're able to wear gold earrings, diamond rings, and so forth. That's because they are robbing us of those things. That's why you see all these um these shops that are selling rings, they are selling, they are selling uh, necklaces and 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 um and ankle bracelets and all that. And they're expensive as hell. Where do they get this stuff from? They get it from robbing us. You understand? They get this stuff from robbing us. And these clueless black Negroes, they are in full agreement with it because they are benefiting. They don't care about their people. Now read verse 46 again. I'm going to deal with that last part. Okay, read that. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 46. Go ahead. For strangers shall reap their fruits. Mm -hmm. and spoil their goods, Go overthrow ahead. their houses, and take their children captives. Stop right there. And do what? And take their children captives. And take their children captives. Read Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. They're going to take our children captive. That's going into the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to show you something with this thing. Okay, Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 32. Go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And Come there on. shall be no might in thine hand. So what you are seeing here says our sons and our daughters will be taken captives. That's what we're reading here in Second Ezra when it says, and take their children captive. So our sons and our daughters will be taken into slavery. And we're not going to have power to get our sons and our daughters back. You see that thing right there? We will not be able to redeem them back. Why? Because we wouldn't have, have any military might because all our, kin our kingdom was destroyed. We are in slavery. We're not going to have any economic might because they robbed us of our resources, our gold, our platinum, and our diamonds and so forth. Our coltain, iridium, you understand? Petroleum, the oil. They will rob us of those, of those resources. We, so we wouldn't have any economic might to get our sons and daughters back. So no military, because we're destroyed as a people. The men were taken, the, the women were separated from their husbands, children from their fathers and mothers. So we don't have any military. The men are destroyed. Guess what? No economic might. They took our resources, they robbed us. Now we've got nothing. That's why. Read again, verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and mm -hmm. thine eyes shall look and fade with longing for them all the day long, and Come there on. shall be no might in thy hand. We're not going to have any might to return our, our sons and our daughters back. Now read verse 41. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 41. Read. Really? Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but mm -hmm. thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So our sons and daughters will not enjoy, will not enjoy to see our daughters grow, our sons grow, because they will go into captivity. And how will they be taken? Jump up to verse 31. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 31. Read. Really? Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. The ox goes and into our resources. Our ox, because our oxen, we used to plow with our oxen. You understand? To make sure that um, we, when we're plowing, when we're planting season and all that, we use our oxen. 
and that's also our, that's our resources that's our food you understand it says that thy ox shall be slain before thine eyes go ahead and thou shalt not eat thereof you're not gonna eat thereof because guess what they're gonna take because when your, your ox is your resources when it says slain meaning robbed taken you understand when it says you shall not eat thereof you're not gonna benefit from the resources of your own land and of your own house go ahead Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Stop and right there. It says, Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Their ox and their ass goes into our resources. That goes into our children as well, because our children is our inheritance. You understand? Our children, they help us to build our build our families, build our empires. So when they take our cows, our ox, and our livestock, including our children too, they are taking our resources. And how were they taken? Violently. They were taken with violence. Okay, read on. Thine heir shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and read. shall not be restored to thee. You see that thing? That it shall not be restored to thee. That's why it says, you shall have no might in thine hand. It will not be restored to us because now somebody else has it. Somebody else has control over it. Somebody else dictates how it's used who uses it and where it's used? You have no say. Wait. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies. Uh huh. And thou shalt have none to re rescue them. You see that thing? Our sheep. That goes into what? It goes into our resources still. It says what? And he shall have none to rescue them. Nobody going to rescue them. That also goes into what? It goes into our sons and our daughters, our people that will be scattered all over the earth. The only one that is going to rescue them is the Lord. Because we are what? We are, we are in the hands of cruel wolves, these nations. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now watch this. Now read verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall mm -hmm. send against thee. Go ahead. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So this is, what would, uh, this is what the nations would do to us. Remember, they will rob us. You understand? They will take our resources by violence. Once they've done that, guess what they will do to us? It says, remember, they robbed us of all our resources, of all our wealth, and our children too. Now, after they've done that, then now, you're going to save them for the things that they've robbed you of. Because they robbed us of our resources, our gold, our diamond, our land, our fruits, you understand? Even our water, our land, our children too. Now when we want those things, we want the resources, you understand, to be able, we want services from the resources, we have to go to them. And that's what's going on right now. They robbed us of everything that we've got, the basic needs of life. Now we have to go to them and they live among us with the stuff, with the resources they've stolen from us. Now we have to go to them and beg for the services that come from the resources that they took from us violently. I need you men and, and women to understand this thing. Read verse 48 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in mm -hmm. hunger, and Come in on. thirst, and yeah. in nakedness, and in want of all things. Mm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So what you are seeing here says, we're going to serve these nations now in hunger. That goes for food, okay? In thirst, anything to drink, and in nakedness, the clothing, the, the clothes that you put on your back, you must go to your enemies for that. Guess what? We had, we... We, in, in, in terms of hunger, we had food. We had resources. In terms of thirst, we have resources. We, the water, because the earth belongs to us. You understand? Any nakedness, the clothes, the resources to make these clothes, they would take those from us as well. And in want of all things, anything you need, anything you don't have, you must go to them. They will provide it for you. But they will provide it, they will provide those things to you at a cost. Is going to cost you your life. Because remember, 
Your enemies, they, will, they, they take everything from you. You understand? And in hunger, now they're going to save, they're going to give you food. You think they're not going to poison the food? Of course they will. You understand? The water. You think they're not going to poison the water? Yes, they will. The clothes that they, the clothes that they, 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 the textile for the clothes that they, they sell to us, you think they're not going to, they're not going to lace them with, with ink and all of that to give you rashes and, and allergies and so forth. Of course they'll do that. And in one of all things, let's say education, you go to school, you do your degree, you don't get a job. You see many of our people, they've got degrees, they've got PhDs and, and master's degrees, but they are washing cars. So what happened to all that money with that degree that you, you got in economics, in mathematics, in whatnot, whatever, but you don't have a job? What's the problem? Because your enemies are not going to give you education for you to be over them, to surpass them. No. Think about that thing. You understand? And these clueless black leaders, they see all of this, but they do nothing. They don't do nothing. They just fatten their pockets. That's all they care about. They are greedy, they are greedy dogs, like the Bible says. You understand? They don't give a damn about their own people. Now watch this. Now read verse 68. Go ahead. Come on, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way wherefore I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for born men and born women, and no man shall buy you. So now the Moses is teaching Moses is teaching us a lesson. The Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again. Give me that in Exodus 20, verse 2, so we see what the definition of the word Egypt means. Exodus 20, verse 2. It says, as part of God's judgment, remember what we read in Deuteronomy 11, verse 28. It says, you, the Lord is going to bring curses upon us if we don't obey. You understand? Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Where? I am the Lord thy God, which mm -hmm. have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out mm -hmm. of the house of bondage. So now Egypt means bondage, the house of slavery. So go back to Deuteronomy 28 now, verse 68 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord shall bring you into the house of bondage again. But this time you're going to go into slavery on ships. Because when we went into Egypt the first time, we walked. That's why he says, again, meaning the second time, you're going to go into slavery on cargo slave ships. You understand? You're not going to walk. This goes into the transatlantic, the sub-Sahara, the Silk Road, the Arab slave trade as well. You understand? With ships. Go ahead. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou mm -hmm. shalt see no more again. We're not going to see our homeland again, right? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Once we get off the slave ship, once we arrive at the play, at the in the, once we arrive at the lands of our captivity, where we are going to be scattered by the way of slave ships. Once we get off these slave ships, it says we are going to be sold. You understand? Unto our enemies, right? for what? For bond men, men. and bond women. Uh -huh. slave and slave no man land. shall buy you. No one is going to redeem you. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 20, verse 31. No one is going to redeem you out of these conditions. Not the president, these clueless Negroes. They are not going to redeem you. They are not even going to try because they only care about what? Their pockets. They only care about maintaining relations with their enemies. The people that are oppressing us on a daily basis, they don't give a damn. The reason why they cannot do anything is because they are not moving in the spirit of Christ and they don't want to know. Because why? They are eating large. They don't care about their own people on the ground that are struggling. That's why the most High God has to raise the prophets up to go out to the street corners and the highways and byways to wake the people up. So we can what? Return back to this Bible and come together and build the 12 tribes of Israel. Now watch this. Now the question you have to ask yourself is that, this transatlantic slave trade, okay? The transatlantic slave trade. Let me pull up some pictures. 
There's a reason why I'm doing this thing. I need you men and women to pay atten close attention, pay close attention, okay? The reason why this is important to, to bring out is because our people, they learn with images, right? Well, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. There's something, there's some place I want to go. Um, read verse 68 again. Something I want to pull out of this verse. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt Wait. see no more again. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for born mm. men and born women, and no uh -huh. man shall buy you. He says, we're going to go into slavery on ships and no man shall buy us. Born men and born women. Now watch this. Now I'm going to show you something because we always talk about the transatlantic slave trade and so forth. You understand? Which is fine. Okay. We always talk about it. You understand? When we are on the streets, when we're teaching our people. Let me get this real quick. Okay. Okay. Read that verse again. Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? By the way, with ships. With ships, with ships. The cargo slave ships, okay? Now watch this. Let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen so we can see this thing. With ships. Now read that part again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With cargo slave ships. So these are the ships. These are the ships that carried our forefathers and foremothers. You understand? During the transatlantic slave trade. That's the white man right there. That's the white man putting black men and black women on the ships. And this, these are the slave ships, the drawings of the slave ships, you understand? Okay, literally like cargo, look at that. That's our forefathers and foremothers on the ships, like cargo, okay? Keep reading, go ahead. By the way wealth I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for Once one man. You get off the slave. It says, once we get off the slave ships, we shall be sold unto our enemies. The same enemies that you see here, putting our forefathers and foremothers on the slave ships. Look at our foremothers right there at the corner, scared and afraid. It says, we shall be sold. Look at that, to be sold. Slave, that's our father right there with chains on his neck and on his wrists and on his ankles. Look at that right there. That's our forefathers. That's in the Bible. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men uh -huh. and for bond, bond women. Men. Bond men. You see that our, for, our forefathers? Bond men. Our foremothers here? Bond women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. No man is going to redeem us out of these conditions except for the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. You understand? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something mm. before we get there. Now, let me share my screen. I'm going to show you where the transatlantic slave trade started, when it started. Who was the main culprit that started the transatlantic slave trade? Watch this. I'm going to show you this demon right here that started the transatlantic slave trade. Okay. Now I want you to read that. That's in Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah. Reading. That's on Wikipedia right there. Read that. Reading from wikipedia.org. Mm -hmm. Pope Nicholas the fifth. Pope Nicholas the fifth. Pope Nicholas. Pope. Pope. Pope Nicholas the fifth. He was the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. He was the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church. He is the one that started the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. This 
white demon right here. This man, he's the one that did that thing. So let's read some synopsis. Read that. Read that paragraph right there. Okay. Pope Nicholas V, 13 November 1397 to 24 March 1455. Yeah, we don't really care about when he was born. Okay. So read that. He says he was what? He was head of the what? He was head of the Catholic Church mm -hmm. and ruler of the Papal States from 6 March 1447 until his death. So he says he was the head of the Catholic Church and ruler of the Papal States from 6 March 1447 until his death. When he says Papal States, he's talking about the states that were ruled over by the popes. That's what he's talking about. Okay, go ahead. Pope Eugene made him a cardinal in 1446 after successful trips to Italy and Germany. And when Eugene died the next year, Parent Chuseli was elected in his place. So now he became a successor. Go ahead. He took his name Nicholas in memory of his obligations to Niccolo Albigati. So now watch this. Now let's go down, okay? I'm gonna show you something. So now let's look at slavery. Let's see his involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Now watch this. Now read that, slavery, okay? Slavery. Mm -hmm. In late spring of 1452, Byzantine Emperor Constantine XI wrote to Pope Nicholas for help against the impending siege by Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II. So the Nicholas Ottoman Sultan, issued, Mehmet, hold on. Me, Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II was part of the what was part of the Turks, the Ottoman Empire. So Constantine the Eleventh, guess what? This is during the time when we was ruling Constantinople. Okay, Byzantine Empire. This was us in 1452. This was us because Mehmed the Second is the one that conquered the city of Byzantine. Okay, read on. Nicholas issued the bull dam. Diverses. The bull. So he says, Nicholas issued the bull, dam diverses. A dam diverses. So Nicholas V, he, 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 he what? He says he issued this thing. A dam diverses is a decree. You understand? Keep reading. We're going to go into it to make sure what it means. Read on. 18th June, 1452. Authorizing King Alfonso V of Portugal to attack, conquer, and subjugate Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, wherever they may be found. That's talking about us. So the Saracens, pagans, and other enemies of Christ, meaning what? Why Jesus? He says, wherever they may be found, he's talking about us. Go ahead. Issued less than a year before the fall of Constantinople, the pool may have been... It says issued less than a year before the fall of Constantinople, meaning the city of Byzantine. Go ahead. The fall of Constantinople. The pool may have been intended to begin another crusade against the Ottoman Empire. But he didn't do that. Okay. So let's see what is the dumb diverses. That's it right there, the dumb diverses. Let's read that. What is this dumb diverses that he issued? You understand? To make sure that um, our forefathers in because remember we ruled Constantinople, Spain, and Portugal. So what did this Pope Nicholas V did? He issued a dumb diverse as a decree to what to, to do what? To convert to, to do false conversion of Roman Catholicism unto us and to push white Jesus onto us. Those of our forefathers that did not agree, they were put to death. Okay, read that. Dumb diverses. Read it. Dumb diverses. Mm -hmm. Dam diverses is a papal is, bull. Dam diverses is a papal bull issued on 18 June 1452 by Pope Nicholas V. Read. It authorized Afonso V of Portugal to conquer Saracens and pagans 
and consign them to perpetual servitude. You see what the you see what the dam diverses was about. The dam diverses was to make sure that our forefathers that was ruling during the time of Spain and Portugal and Constantinople, guess what? It says to consign them to perpetual servitude, meaning perpetual slavery. So this dam diverses was a decree by Pope Nicholas, and he authorized Afonso V of Portugal to do that thing. Now watch this. Let's see what is this papal book. Okay. Now read that. Papal bull. Papal bull. A papal bull is a type of public decree, letters, patent, or charter issued by a pope of the Catholic Church. You see that thing? Go ahead. It is named after the leaden seal, bulla, which was traditionally appended to the end in order to authenticate it. You see that thing? So this decree needed to be authenticated in order for us to carry out the instruction that was written on. What was the instruction? To put all our forefathers in perpetual slavery. So Pope Nicholas V is the one that started the transatlantic slave trade. Now watch this. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go back. Now read the next paragraph. Ownership of the Canary Islands. Read that. Ownership of the Canary Islands continued to be a source of dispute between Spain and Portugal, and Nicholas was asked to settle the matter, ultimately in favor of the Portuguese. So now Pope Nicholas, he favored the Portuguese because he says there was, there was a dispute between Spain and Portugal, and Nicholas was asked to settle the matter. So he favored the Portuguese. You understand? It's going to become clear as we read on. Keep reading. The geographical area of the concession given in the pool is not explicit, but historian Richard Racewell finds that it clearly refers to the recently discovered lands along the coast of West Africa. So what, were, what are these dis recently discovered lands along the coast of West Africa? You talk about Ghana, Guinea, Nigeria, and so forth. Guess what? Across the Atlantic, because that, this, this is now, this papal bull is to issue out the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade. But I want to show you the people that ultimately pushed the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to show you that. But it was started by Pope Nicholas V because he was a pope of the Roman Catholic Church. Keep reading. Portuguese ventures were intended to compete with the Muslim trans-Sahara caravans. Stop right there. So there is that the Portuguese ventures were intended to compete with the Muslim trans-Sahara caravans. Remember the Muslims, remember the Muslims, they were pushing the sub-Sahara slave trade to the far east. You understand? To the far east. That goes into what? That goes into the Silk Road slave trade. You can go to the ASR channel. You can find more history on that. Keep reading. Which played a key role in the highly profitable Muslim slave trade, and also mm. held a monopoly on West African gold and ivory. You see that thing? So the Portuguese, they were pushing what? Remember the Portuguese, there was um, Pope Lincoln as the fifth, he sided with the Portuguese. The Portuguese, they also went what? To the West Coast of Africa to do what? To deal in slaves, to deal in gold, to, go, to deal in ivory. That's why Ghana is called the Gold Coast because they went there for the gold. They went there for the ivory. Not only that, but for slaves as well. While they were doing that, guess what was going on? The Muslims were also on their conquest of slaves, slave trade, our forefathers, you understand? And the Muslims worked together with the Hamites to sell our forefathers to the Portuguese into what? During, to the, uh, for the transatlantic slave trade. While they were busy pushing the sub-Sahara slave trade. Okay, go ahead. The Portuguese claimed territorial rights along the African coast by virtue of having invested time and treasure in discovering it. How can they discover it when there's people already there and the resources are there already? Go ahead. The Castilian claim was the Castilian claim was based on their being the heirs of the Visigoths. The Visigoths is talking about Edomites. Go ahead. 
In 1454, a fleet of caravels from Seville and Cadiz traded along the African coast and upon their return were in, intercepted by a Portuguese squadron. So now they, they are fighting amongst each other. You understand? There was a Portuguese squadron that goes into their soldiers. Keep reading. Watch this. Enric IV of Castile. Enrique, Enrique IV of Castile. Go ahead. Enrique the Fourth of Castile threatened war. Because now they are now, remember, they are greedy. So now they're going to fight amongst themselves for the resources that they have found. Read on. Afonso the Fifth appealed to the Pope for moral support of Portugal's right to, to a monopoly of trade in lands she discovered. They did not discover these lands. These lands were already there. Understand them. Keep reading. Go ahead. The papal bull Romanus Pontifex issued on 8th January 1455, endorsed Portuguese possession of Quetta, which they already held, and the exclusive right to trade, navigation, and fishing in the discovered lands, and Go reaffirmed ahead. and reaffirmed the previous dam, dam diverses. They reaffirmed the previous dam diverses that was issued by Pope Nicholas V, who made sure that Alfonso V, he made sure that this decree came to pass. Go ahead. It granted permission to Alfonso and his heirs to make purchases and sales of any things and goods and vehicles whatsoever as it may seem fit with Come any on. Saracens and infidels in said regions. They provide said regions. So the, the, in, the Saracens and infidels is making reference to us. Go ahead. Provided they be not iron instruments, wood, wood used for construction, cordage, ships, and any kinds of armor. Any, any kinds of armor. Okay, now watch this. What we're reading here is what? What we're reading here is they are preparing to sell us. You understand? Because remember, they have a paper bull, the dam diverses to make sure that the trade goes on. And who was given the, the upper hand? The Portuguese was given the upper hand in order for them to deal in trade. You understand? To be able to get access to resources when they, and they say they discovered lands, but the lands they discovered, the people was already there. Even when they crossed the Atlantic, when they went to South, Central, and eventually North America, there was people there already. The tribe of Gare, the Seminole Indians, you know, the Taino Indians, the Puerto Ricans, the Cuban Indians, they found them there already. Okay, go ahead. Next paragraph. The pool conferred exclusive trading rights to the Portuguese between Morocco and the Indies with the right to conquer and convert the inhabitants. The inhabitants is talking about us. They were converting us to what? To Roman Catholicism. Why Jesus? Go ahead. A, a significant concession given by Nicholas in a brief issued to King Alfonso in 1454 extended the rights granted to existing territories to all those that might be taken in the future. Meaning the slaves that will be taken in the future. Go ahead. So this, this dam diverses, it extended rights to other to existing territories and all those that might be taken in the future, meaning territories that they will conquer in future. So the dam diverses, this papal bull that, were, or that was um, uh, authored and authorized by Pope Nicholas V. Remember, Alfonso was the king. So the king had no say. The Pope had power over the king. Understand, right? Consistent with these broad aims, it allowed the Portuguese to invade, search mm. out, capture, vanquish, mm. Come on. And, subdue, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever, and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. You see what they did? 
It says, look, look at what they did. This papal bull, it says, it allowed the Portuguese to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all citizens and pagans whatsoever and other enemies of Christ. Who are those enemies? Talk about us, our people. Because remember, when, when, when they conquered Constantinople, guess what they did? The Spanish, the Portuguese, guess what? We were ruling as the Moors in Spain and Portugal. What do you think they did? They robbed us because we had wealth. They robbed us of the gold, the silver, the diamonds, the platinum, our money, everything that we had, and our clothes too. They robbed of everything that we've got when during the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition. This is now part of this, guess what? What I'm about to read in the next couple of pages, you're gonna read about the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition, which is part of this, you understand? And who was started by who? Pope Nicholas V, you understand? That's why it says, what wheresoever placed, meaning the infidels as they call us, and the kingdoms, because we had kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, the possessions we owned, and all movable and immovable, immovable goods. What is the movable goods? People, you understand, livestock, whatsoever held and possessed by them and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. That's what the damn diverses was about. That's what that uh, people bull was about. It was a decree to do this to us. You understand? Go ahead. He says, however. However, together with a second reference to some who have already been enslaved, the this has been used. Are, hold on. Our people that was already enslaved. Remember, don't forget what the Muslims, because the Muslims were already pushing slavery. The Muslim didn't start during that. They started way before that. You understand? The Muslims started their, their, their slavery in 652 AD. The sub saharan slave trade, that's when it started. So the Portuguese, they coming later on, when they are pushing slavery, but they did much. They did much worse to us. But what I'm showing you is that all these nations, you've got the Arabs pushing the, 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 on the sub-Saharan slave trade towards the East Coast, the Far East, the East Coast and the Far East. You've got the Portuguese under the paper bull, the dam diverses that was given by Pope Nicholas V on the West Coast so that they can cross the Atlantic. Hence the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, go ahead. This has been used to suggest that Nicholas sanctioned the purchase of black slaves from the infidel. You see that thing? They were purchasing black slaves, our forefathers and foremothers. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Go ahead. Many guinea men and other Negroes taken by force. Thing? Many guinea men. Remember the Bantu? The Bantus were taken from where? Guinea, the Gulf of Guinea. And other Negroes taken by force. So this papal bull, this damn diverses was to take us by force and to convert us to convert us to what? Christianity. So Christianity was forced on us. You understand? Go ahead. Many Guinea men and other Negroes taken by force and some by butter of unprohibited articles mm. or by other lawful contract of purchase have been converted to the Catholic faith. You see that thing? Then he says, we were converted to the Catholic faith by force. They took us by force and they converted us to the Catholic faith by force. Keep reading. And it is hoped by the help of divine mercy mm. that if such progress to be continued with them, either those people, either those peoples will be converted to the faith or at least the souls of many of them will be gained for Christ. You see that thing? It says they'll either be converted to the faith or at least the souls of many of them will be gained for Christ. Meaning as slaves. You, you see that thing? So that's why it says divine mercy. So what they were doing, they believed that this was divine mercy. To enslave us, they believed that it was divine mercy to enslave us. You cannot make this ish up. Okay. Now watch this. Hmm. Ja, read on. Keep reading. Read on. It is, it is on this basis. Read. It is on this basis that it has been argued and that collectively the two bulls issued by Nicholas gave the Portuguese the right to 
acquire slaves along the African coast by force or trade. You see that thing? Now watch this. Give me that in First Maccabees chapter 3. First Maccabees. Okay. First Maccabees. I want to show you how the pieces fit together. First Maccabees 3 verse 41. Because here what we're reading is that Pope Nicholas, the papal, these two papal bulls issued by Nicholas V, it says they gave the Portuguese the rights to acquire slaves along the African coast, meaning the West Coast, by, by force or trade. They forced conversion, which is the Roman Catholic faith, you understand, or slavery. Now read that. First Maccabees 3 verse 41. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 41. Mm -hmm. And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. Read. A power also of Syria and of the land of the Philistines joined themselves unto them. So now you had, you had, uh, you had the Portuguese, you had the Muslims, and you had the Hamites joining themselves together to come and buy the children of Israel for slaves. Now I'm going to show you that. Keep reading. Now read the, the next part of that paragraph. By dealing, I'm going to show you that because here we're reading about the Philistines, which is the Hamites. You understand? They were working together with who? The Muslims and the Portuguese. Watch this. Read that. So that means that's letting you know that these Hamites, they knew who they were selling in slavery. They knew who they were selling because in Ghana, in Guinea, Nigeria, Cape Verde, you understand? And in Guinea, guess what? He says, Guinea men, he says, they found what? And other Negroes taken by force. That's the Bantus, okay? Keep reading. Read that. By dealing with local African chieftains Stop right and there. Muslim. By dealing with local African chieftains. What is this talking about? Hamites. 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 They were working together. So you have the Portuguese working together with the Hamites. Go ahead. And Muslim slave traders. You see that thing? And Muslim slave traders. So you've got Muslims. You've got Hamites. You've got Hamites and Muslims working together with the Portuguese to buy and sell us. Go ahead. The Portuguese sought to become key European players in the lucrative slave trade. You see that thing? The Portuguese sought to become key European players in lucrative slave trade. So these Portuguese, who are they? Give me that in Joel 3. Let me show you something. We know the Portuguese, these are Edomites. You understand? Portuguese Caucasians. Okay, watch this. Give me Joel 3. I'm going to show you something right here. So when it says the Grecians, that's the Portuguese. Okay. Grecians, that's the Portuguese. I'm going to come back to this chapter. Just get Joel 3 verse 6. Let's get to the point. Joel 3 verse 6. Remember in 1 Maccabees 3 41, it says they got silver and gold very much. Where did they get that? Where did they get the silver and the gold? Remember Deuteronomy 28 verse 33 says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crush always. Where did they go get the gold from? Where did they get the silver from? They robbed us. And they used the silver and the gold that they robbed us to purchase and buy slaves and to insure the ships. I'm coming to that next. Okay, read that in Joel 3 verse 6. Come on. Joel 3 verse 6. Go ahead. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Christians mm -hmm. that ye might remove them far from their border. You see that thing? They removed us far from our border. They removed us far from our border, meaning our homeland. Not only that, but when we ran um, deeper into the continent, we started to hide among these Hamites. Guess what? These Hamites knew who we were and they worked together with the who? They worked together with the Palestinians, the Ottoman Turks, to sell us to the Grecians. Who are those Grecians? The Portuguese. That's what we're reading here on Wikipedia, the Portuguese. Now watch this. Let's go to um, not the paper book. We already read the paper book. Okay. Now watch this. Mm. Before we get that, now read the Spanish Inquisition, the Portuguese Inquisition. 
because the Portuguese Inquisition, guess what? We, we were ruling Spain and Portugal as the Moors. Okay, now read that. Portuguese Inquisition. Now remember, the Portuguese Inquisition is, is in 1536. Okay, in 1536. The papal bull was issued in 1452. Keep that in mind. Now read that. Portuguese Inquisition. Reading from wikipedia.org, Portuguese Inquisition. Uh -huh. The Portuguese Inquisition, officially known as the General Council of the Holy Office of the Inquisition in Portugal, was really? formally established in Portugal in 1536 at the request of its king, John uh -huh. III. Now watch this, hold this. We come in, we come in right back. I'm gonna deal with the Portuguese Inquisition in a second. Remember, the Portuguese were given carte blanche by Pope Nicholas V with his papal bulls. Now let's go to the Spanish Inquisition. I'm gonna show you something. Now read the, the Spanish Inquisition because the, the Spanish Inquisition comes before the Portuguese Inquisition after the papal bull that was given by Pope Nicholas. Read that. Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. The Tribunal of the Holy Office of the Inquisition, commonly known as the Spanish Inquisition, was established in 1478 by the Catholic monarchs. By the what? By the Catholic monarchs. By the Catholic monarchs. We're gonna tell you what who those Catholic monarchs are. Keep reading. Go ahead. King Ferdinand II of Aragon. Mm. And, and Queen Isabella I of Castile. You see that thing? King Ferdinand II of Aragon and Queen Isabella I of, the, of Castile. These two, these two Catholic monarchs, they are the ones that were using, they were following the papal bull that was drafted by Pope Nicholas V. They are the same ones that, what, that gave the carte blanche, they gave the papal bull the decree to Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors in 1492 to go and conquer Northern Kingdom that they call it the age of discovery. You understand? So it all ties in together. Okay, keep reading. It was intended to maintain Catholic orthodoxy in their kingdoms and to replace the medieval inquisition. Oh, right there. The which medieval was, hold on. The medieval inquisition that goes into what the dark ages. The medieval inquisition, that's when they conquered us under the Turks, the Ottoman Turks. Okay, go ahead. Which was under papal control. That's it right there, which was under papal control. Meaning what? The popes were the one that had power over the Roman Catholic Church and the orthodoxy in their kingdom. So the monarchs, which is King Ferdinand, the second and Queen Isabel, guess what? They are the ones that gave, um, they gave what they call it the, the, the Spanish Amara. They are the ones that gave, um, what's this guy's name? Um, Christopher Columbus to go and conquer Northern Kingdom. Talk about, no, they are looking for spices, but they had what? They had army, they had an army. Christopher Columbus didn't, he had an army with him. You understand? And they were looking for spices. Remember when we were watching that movie Dune? When we were watching that movie Dune, and they had all these machinery, and they guess what? They said they were mining for spices. No, they were not mining for spices. That was a metaphor for what? It was a metaphor for the resources upon the land. And that's what the, the Spanish Amara contained by Queen Ferdinand of uh, Queen Fer King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel. They were following the papal bull that was drafted in 1452 already. Okay, keep reading. Go ahead. It became the most substantive of the three different manifestations of the wider Catholic Inquisition, mm -hmm. along with the Roman Inquisition and Portuguese Inquisition. Stop right there. Along with the Roman Inquisition and the Portuguese Inquisition. So the Roman also did that. The Portuguese also did that. The Catholic Church also did that, which is all the same people, by the way. Go ahead. The Spanish Inquisition may be defined broadly as operating in Spain and in all Spanish colonies and territories, which included the Canary Islands, 
the kingdom mm -hmm. of Naples. Wait. And all Spanish possessions in North, Central, and South America. You see that thing? North, Central, and South America. That's what, that forms part of the transatlantic slave trade because they had to go over the Atlantic Ocean to do what? To go and conquer new lands, which is called the New World. That's where the New World Order comes from. Because we, before they, trust, they, cro they crossed the Atlantic, it was called the Old World, which was the Known World. When they crossed the Atlantic, it was called the New World, which is the New World Order. Okay, go ahead. According to, mo to modern estimates, around 150,000 people were prosecuted for various offenses during the three century duration of the Spanish Inquisition, of whom between 3,000 and 5,000 were executed. Now that, those Minus numbers are just approximates. Those numbers are just approximates, but keep reading. Read that, the Inquisition was what? The Inquisition was originally intended primarily to identify heretics among those who converted from Judaism and Islam to Catholicism. Catholicism. Now what's happening is that the Spanish, this is the Spanish Inquisition. It says the, the Inquisition was originally intended primarily to identify heretics. Who are the heretics? Us. We was the heretics. Why, why, were they, why did they say we are heretics? Because we did not want to convert. We're keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. During, because we rule Spain, we rule Portugal. So when they came to conquer us, they say they identified us as heretics because we did not want to convert to the Roman Catholic faith. That's why when you look at North, Central, and South America, what is primarily, especially in South and North America, I mean, South and Central America is mainly the Roman Catholic faith. Our brother's Northern Kingdom, yes. So it says, among those who converted from Judaism and Islam, because you had, you had Moors who practiced Judaism. You had Moors who practiced Islam, but they were still Israelites. It says to, they converted to Catholicism. Now read the next part. Keep reading, go ahead, watch this. The regulation of the faith of newly converted Catholics was intensified after the royal decrees issued in 1492 and mm. 1502. Come on. Ordering Jews and Muslims to convert to Catholicism or leave Castile. You see that thing? Is, so is, look what happening. It says a new, it says what? The regulation of the faith of newly converted Catholics was intensified, meaning those of our forefathers that was practicing Judaism and the, Mo or the Moors that were calling themselves Muslims. It says they were converted to be, they were converted into the Catholic faith. They were called Catholics. You understand? It says it was intensified, meaning to make sure that the Inquisition made sure that you were fully converted to the Roman Catholic faith. It says a royal decree was issued in 1492. That goes into what Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors in 1502, ordering Jews and Muslims, these Muslims don't talk about Ishmael, talk about Israelites, to convert to Catholicism or leave Castile, meaning leave that area. Keep reading, watch this. Resulting in hundreds of thousands forced conversions. Mm. The persecution of conversos and moriscos and the mass expulsions of Jews and of Muslims from Spain. So what's happening here is what? It says there were forced conversions, the persecution of conversos. Let's see what is a converso. Watch this. Now read that. Read the definition of converso right there. A converso, convert, was a Jew who converted to Catholicism in Spain or Portugal, particularly during the 14th and 15th centuries, or one of his or her descendants. You see that thing? A converso was a converted Jew converted to the Roman Catholic faith in the 14th and 15th century, meaning 1300s and 1400s. You understand? One of his, his or her descendants. That's a converso. Let's see what is a Morisco. Okay, read that. Moriscos. Moriscos were former Muslims and their descendants whom the Roman Catholic Church and the Spanish crown commanded to convert to Christianity 
or face compulsory exile after Spain outlawed the open practice of Islam by its sizable Muslim population in early 16th. Hundred. Now watch this. The Moriscos were Israelites that were practicing Islam and who converted to the Roman Catholic faith. Yeah, and the and the Spanish crown command, the Spanish crown goes into King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. So Moriscos were Jews that were practicing Islam. The, more, the conversos were Jews who converted to the Roman Catholic faith. So it says during this time, there was false conversions to make sure that guess what? They were converted to the Roman Catholic faith. If they did not, they were expelled. It says that and the mass expulsion of Jews and of Muslims, which is the Moriscos from Spain. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 18. I'm going to show you. Because during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, that some they did the same thing. You understand? So during the time of the 1400s, it wasn't a new thing. It was something that we're accustomed to doing. Okay, watch this. Acts chapter 18, read verse 2. Acts chapter 18, verse 2. Go ahead. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born mm -hmm. in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his really? wife Priscilla. Come on. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. You see that thing? He commanded Italy because that's Spain. It says, this is Claudius Caesar. Claudius Caesar commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came, and, and, and came unto them. So you see what was going on? There was already expulsion of Jews from Spain. You understand? By Claudius Caesar. So the same thing that they did back then during the time of the Acts of the Apostles is the same thing that they was doing during the Spanish Inquisition. You understand? Of our people. Now read that. Go back to the article. The Inquisition. The Inquisition was not definitely abolished until 1834 during the reign of Isabella II. After a period of declining influence in the, in the preceding century. So now watch this. So our forefathers that did not want, it says resulting in the thousands of forced conversions, the persecution of conversos and moriscos and mass expulsion of Jews and of Muslims from Spain. Because those of our forefathers that did not want to convert, they were expelled. And those of our forefathers that remained, guess what? They were converted to the Roman Catholic faith. I hope you brothers and sisters understand that, what we're going over. Okay, let's go to the Portuguese. Remember the. Spanish Inquisition, 1478. Let's go to the Portuguese Inquisition now. Read that, Portuguese Inquisition. Portuguese Inquisition, uh -huh. reading from wikipedia.org. The go Portuguese ahead. Inquisition, officially known as the General Council of the Holy Office of the Inquisition in Portugal, was formally established in Portugal in 1536 at the request of its king, John III. Read. Although Manuel I had asked for the installation of the Inquisition in 1515 to fulfill the commitment of his marriage with Maria of Aragon. So guess what? Was, they, their, their marriages was based upon them forming alliances and doing what? And forcing the Jews that they found in Portugal, the Moors, to convert to what? The Roman Catholic faith. What does that mean? Worship why Jesus. Remember, this is the 1400s now, where um, during the time of Leonardo da Vinci, okay, Michelangelo, you understand, Pope Nicholas, the uh, Pope Alexander VI of Rome, Alfonso, and so forth. Go ahead. It was only after his death that Pope Paul III acquiesced. Acquiesced. In the period, acquiesced. In the period after the medieval Inquisition, the medieval it was Inquisition. One... Hold on. The medieval Inquisition is talk about when they were conquering us during the 1400s, 1453. Okay, the fall of Constantinople, the Byzantine Empire. Go ahead. It was one of three different manifestations of the wider Christian Inquisition along with the Spanish Inquisition, 
and Roman Inquisition. The Goa Inquisition was an extension of the Portuguese Inquisition in colonial era Portuguese India. Portuguese India. So now, what I want to show you, what, what, what I wanted to show you was what? What I wanted to show you was the how the transatlantic slave trade took place. The transatlantic slave trade took started by was started by who? By Pope Nicholas V. Then that's when Queen Isabella, King Ferdinand, get, get involved, got involved with the Spanish Inquisition. And then the Portuguese Inquisition, when they kicked us out of Spain, when we did not want to convert. And many of our forefathers, remember, during the time of the, the transatlantic slave trade, there were many of our forefathers because we ran deeper into the continent of Africa. Give me that in Luke and Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. I'm going to show you something. Because when we were expelled out of Spain and Portugal, we ran deeper into the continent because our forefathers and foremothers was already there in on the continent already. When did we get there? Get that in Matthew 2, verse 13. Watch this. Matthew 2, verse 13. They don't know I'm going over these histories because these clueless black Negroes, they don't know history. So the reason why you see how people are confused is because they that are led by them are, are destroyed. I'm proving my point here in the spirit of Christ. Read that. Matthew 2, verse 13. Come on. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Right. And when they were departed, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Mm -hmm. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see that thing? So the angel visited our forefather Joseph and Mary to say, Listen, take the baby Christ and run deeper into the continent. Go and hide in Africa. Because we're already in Africa, so they run deeper into the continent. So now the same thing that was told by the angel to Joseph and Mary is the same thing that Christ told us when the Roman, when the during the time of 70 AD. So get that in Luke 21, 24. Luke 21, verse 20. Read Luke 21, verse 20. Okay. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Go ahead. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mm -hmm. then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Because that, that's the Roman Inquisition. When Rome destroyed us, you understand? 70 AD. Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. That's Egypt. Flee to the mountains, meaning run deeper into the continent of Africa and hide yourselves. Read on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Come on. And let and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. Read. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So now this goes into what we read in Deuteronomy 28. The things that are written that must be fulfilled is Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15 through 68, the curses, the judgments that we read in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28. So now what we're reading here is, is what? This, this right here is during the time of 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. Over 1 million Jews, when you read um, from Babylon to Timbuktu, it says over 1 million Jews fled into Africa. Guess what? During the time of the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition, guess what happened? When we, when we did not want to convert to the Roman Catholic faith, guess what our forefathers do, did? They ran, you understand? They were expelled out of Spain and Portugal under the, the, the purple bull that was drafted and approved by Pope Nicholas V. So when we ran deeper into the continent, we knew that our forefathers and foremothers, they already there because when did they go? When, we, when did we go into the deeper into the continent? 70 AD. 70 AD. I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together so you brothers and sisters can understand what's going on here. You understand? So when we ran deeper into the continent, we knew that our brothers and sisters are there already. But guess what happened? In the 1600s, guess what? We were sold into captivity. The transatlantic slave trade happened. You understand? But it started already in 1492. Because when... Um, 
under the Spanish Inquisition, you understand, the Portuguese Inquisition, which extended all the way up to what to the 1600s when they started to, there was a major slave trade by the Portuguese, you understand, the Spaniards, you understand, by the help of who? Muslims, meaning Arabs and Hamites. So guess what? The descendants of the, the, the Spaniards, the descendants of the Portuguese, the descendants of Pope Nicholas V, who do you think those people were? Who are those people? I'm going to show you. Watch this. Give me, give me, um, let's go to, let's go to this book. Let's go to the book now. Watch this. I'm going to show you something this day. I'm going to show you how the pieces fit together. Okay. Page 201. Okay. Let me share my screen. So take good notes. Okay. Watch this. Now, this book right here is called New World Jewelry. Okay, this is page 201. Let's go to the first page. So this is the this is the book, New World Jewelry. 14. Read that. Read the title of the book. New World Jewelry. Uh -huh. 1493 to 1825. Uh -huh. Requiem for the Forgotten by Seymour B. Liebman. By Seymour B. Lipman. Seymour B. Lipman. So 1492, remember, it was during the time of the what? The, the, con the, the conquistadors. And uh, by, by who? By Ferdinand. Remember King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella? They are the ones that commissioned Christopher Columbus to go and conquer the so-called New World. You understand? So 1493. How did Christopher Columbus... And the conquistadors, how did they get to the Atlantic? How did they get over the Atlantic Ocean? I'm going to show you how they did it. Let's go to page 201. Now, I want you to read that, the highlighted part. Let me, let me, let me enlarge the, let me enlarge it so we can see it. Now, read that. New World Jewelry, page 183. New World Jewelry, page 183. Okay, go ahead. Read the highlighted part. The Jews were the largest ship chandlers in the entire Caribbean region, where the shipping business was mainly a Jewish enterprise. You see that thing? Is that the Jews were the largest ship chandlers in the entire Caribbean region? That goes into what? That's Central America. That goes into that. That's, that's the islands, because that means they've already crossed the Atlantic is as where the shipping business. So Christopher Columbus, the only reason why he was able to cross the Atlantic is because the shipping business was mainly a Jewish enterprise. So these, the, these Jewish people, they were responsible for the slave trade. They were responsible for the transatlantic slave trade. They are the ones that insured these ships. They are the ones that owned these ships. They are the ones that were transporting our people from the west coast of Africa to the new world, North, Central, and South America. You understand? The same people that are in our land today, the same people that are in our land today calling themselves Jewish, they are the ones that were funding the transatlantic slave trade. I want you to understand that thing, okay? Read on, read the next highlighted part. So these people, these these, these Jewish people, this is Amalek. They are the descendants of the Portuguese and the Spaniards. Pay close attention now. Okay, read that part. Read the highlighted part. The ships were not only owned by Jews, mm -hmm. but, were, but were manned by Jewish crews and sailed under the command of Jewish captains. You see that thing? This is letting you know. This is not talking about us. You understand? This is not talking about us. But I want to show you something. You know what? Read that. Shipping and trading did not lack difficulties. I want you to read that part. Read that part right there. Okay, read it. Shipping and trading did not lack difficulties. A good part of the trade with the Spanish possessions was clandestine. Was clandestine. It was a clandestine operation. Meaning what? It was not supposed to be known. The people that was behind the, sh the, the shipping business, you understand? 
it was not supposed to be known. So that's why here it says, it says a good part of the trade with the Spanish possessions was clandestine. So the Spaniards, remember, the Spanish Inquisition and the Portuguese Inquisition. So who was responsible for these ships? It was the Spaniards and the Portuguese. Though their descendants is what? Is Amalek. Amalek is their descendants. Understand that? The people that call themselves Jewish, the Israelis, both Benjamin Netanyahu, that's them. Okay, go ahead. The Jews armed their vessels to defend themselves against pirates and privateers. Go ahead. The ships were not only owned by Jews, but were manned by Jewish crews and sailed mm. under the command of Jewish captains. It says the ships were not only owned by Jews. So these Jewish people, they owned the ships that transported our forefathers and foremothers from the west coast of Africa, from Guinea, from St. Thomas. You understand? They are the ones. They are the ones that owned these ships, but were also manned by Jewish crews. So you had Amalek, Israelis, that were men, that were what? That were that were the that was part of the crew that was manning these ships. And says they sailed under command of Jewish captains, Amalek, Jewish people, Israelis. The people that claim that they are the people of God, they are the same people that sold us into slavery. So those are not the real Jews. You understand? They sold the real Jews into slavery. Okay, read that. Many of the ships. Many of the ships were engaged in bringing slaves from Africa to the 13 colonies the mm -hmm. British islands in the Caribbean and the Spanish colonies. Meaning what? The colonies that were conquered by Spain, the colonies that was conquered by Britain, because they were all working together. Remember it says it was, it was, it was the Spaniards, it was the Portuguese and the, the, the Europeans, which is all the same people, it's all white people. They are all the same. You understand? Next part of that highlighted part, come on. Although centering in Curaca in Curacao, in Caracal, Caracal. Although centering in Caracal, the Jews spread through most of the West India Islands, uh -huh. French, English, and Spanish, as well as Dutch. That go, you see that these are the these are the people that was involved in the slave trade: the French, the English, the Spaniards, and the Dutch. And who were, they were working together with Amalek, which is all white people. Because they like to cause, remember, as I don't know if you brothers and sisters seen on the news, where Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopi Goldberg was suspended from the View morning show because she said um, the, the Hitler, what, what Hitler did to the so-called Jew, Jewish people, he says it's not, it was not about race. Because in the media, the way they portrayed it, they make it seem like the Amalek, meaning Jewish people, they are a separate race. No, are, those are all white people. Those were all white people fighting amongst each other because they like to separate themselves. Oh, no, no, we are separate. We are the people. They are not the people of God. Those are the sons of Esau. Those are the sons of Eliphaz, to be specific. You understand? Who had a concubine called Timnan. Understand that? So Amalek is a bastard child of Esau. You understand? And they are the ones that are calling themselves Jewish today. They are not the real Jews. Understand that thing. They were involved in selling our forefathers and foremothers. Now read that. The governor of Venezuela, because those are our people. The governor in Venezuela had to accept the fact that unless he allowed local products to be shipped in Dutch ships, they would never reach Europe. Mm -hmm. A large proportion of these ships were owned by Jews who became active participants in the trade between Venezuela and the Old World. The Old World is talking about the, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Far East that goes into China and India, you understand, and Japan. But the Eastern Hemisphere, that's going to talk about the continent of Africa. So it says, not only did they own the ships, not only did they insure the ships, not only did they man the ships, but it says they became active participants. Talk about the Jewish people, the Israelis. It says they became active participants of what? 
in the trade between Venezuela and the old world, meaning what? The Western, the Eastern Hemisphere. The new world that goes into Venezuela and all that, which is the new world, not Central and South America. It, that's what he's going into. You understand? But watch this. Give me the book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 12. Judges. Okay? Judges 3, verse 12. I'm almost done. Judges 3, verse 12. Read what you got. Come on. Judges, chapter 3, verse 12. Go ahead. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Now watch this. Next verse. The next verse is what we want. Go ahead. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek. That's those are that's the Japanese and the children, the children of Ammon and what? And Amalek. And Amalek. Amalek. Amalek is the Jewish people of today. That's Amalek. You understand? They are the people that are occupying our land today. Go ahead. And went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. You see that thing right there? So when they were selling our people, right? When they were selling our people, because they were the ones that insured the ships and all that, guess what? Yes, they, were, they, were, they said they became active participants in the slave trade between Venezuela and the old world. Yes. But what I want to show you is that Amalek always wanted our land. They always wanted the land of Israel. And it says they what? They possessed, he says they smote Israel, meaning Amalek smote Israel, and it says they possessed the city of palm trees. The city of palm trees, that's Jerusalem. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 34. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Okay, Deuteronomy 34 verse 1. Watch this. So Amalek, they smote us, they smitten us, and they possessed the city of palm trees. Let's see what that is, the city of palm trees. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 1. Go ahead. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan. Go ahead. And all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the utmost sea. Go ahead. So the Lord is showing Moses the promised land. Come on. And the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees unto Zohar. The city of palm trees is the land of Jerusalem. Okay. So they always wanted our land. Amalek always wanted our land. Now watch this. Let's get some history on Amalek. Give me Genesis 36 verse 8. Genesis chapter 36 verse 8. Who's Amalek? Okay. Amalek who all, always wanted our land. The city of palm trees. Watch this. Genesis 36 verse 8 and 9. Read that. Genesis chapter 36, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. Go ahead. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. So Esau, Edom, Idumia, that's the, that's the Caucasian race of today, the so-called white man. So the Jewish people, Israelis, they are all white people. Don't get, don't be fooled. They are all white people. You understand? Now jump down to verse 10. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 36, verse 10. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Adar, the wife of Esau. Ruel, the son of Bashemath, the wife of Esau. So now we've got the sons of Esau, Eliphaz, the son of Adar, the wife of Esau, Reuel, the son of Bashemath, the wife of Esau. So now we're going to deal with Eliphaz. Read verse 12 now. Come on. Genesis chapter 36, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And Timna was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. So Timna was a concubine. Eliphaz. Hold on. Timna was a concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. So Eliphaz has a concubine named Timna. 
Go ahead. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. Mm -hmm. These were the sons of Adar, Esau's wife. So now Amalek is the bastard child. Amalek is the bastard child. You understand? They are the bastards. Now watch this. You know that in Zechariah 9 verse 6 to prove that. So Amalek is the Jewish people of today. They are all Edomites. They are all white people. Okay, don't be fooled by that thing. Zechariah 9 verse 6. Read that. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 6. Come on. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. You see that thing? And a I will bastard, Hold on. A bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. Ashdod is modern day Tel Aviv. Okay, go ahead. And I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. The Philistine that goes into the Palestinians because in our land today, you've got the, you, the, you've got the Jewish people, Amalek, white people, and you've got, the, you've got Muslims over there. You've got the Arabs. You understand the Palestinians, both of which don't belong on that land. The Palestinians don't belong on that land. And what, guess what? Amalek don't belong on that land, the Jewish people, because that's not their land. Those are converts. They converted to Judaism by the son of Simon Maccabee, John Hycranus, during the time of the Greeks. You understand? During the time of the Hasmonean dynasty. Okay. Now watch this. Give me the book of Esther, chapter 8, verse 17. Because you had many times in history where, uh, uh, where the other nations converted to our culture and our heritage. You understand? One of the examples that I want to show is during the time of the Persian Empire. Okay, watch this. Esther, chapter 8, verse 17. Let's read that. Esther, chapter 8, verse 17. Go ahead. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever mm. the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And right. many of the people of the land became Jews. Really? For the fear of the Jews fell upon them. You see that part right there? It says many of the people of the land became Jews, meaning they converted to Judaism. They converted to our laws and customs for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So it happened during the time of Persia. It's not a new thing. It happened back then. You understand? And guess what? It happened during the time of the Greeks too. When John High Craners converted many of the Edomites to, to, uh, to Judaism. So guess what? During the time of the Greeks, guess what? The Greeks were taken over by the Romans, which became the greco roman Empire. So during the time of Rome, you had the same people that was converted from that were converted to Judaism by John Hycanus, their, their descendants, guess what they did? They continued the same traditions that their forefathers did that was converted to Judaism. Now watch this. Let me prove that. Give me one second. Okay, read that. Uh, John Hycanus, read that. Reading from Britannica.com. Come on. John Hycanus, the first. Mm -hmm. John Hycanus the first, high priest and ruler of the Jewish nation from 135 or 134 to 104 BC. Okay, go ahead. Under his reign, the Hasmonean kingdom of Judea in ancient Palestine attained power and great prosperity. And the Pharisees, a scholarly sect with popular backing, and the Sadducees, an aristocratic sect that comprised the priesthood, became well-defined religious parties. Okay, so now let's see who John Hycanus is. Read that. Hycanus was the youngest son of Simon Maccabees, and thus a member of the Hasmonean dynasty, so-called after an ancestor named Hosmonius. Hasmonius, Hasmonius, Hasmonius. Okay, now read that. Now read that part right there when it says, um, yes, read that part right there. The remainder of Hycanus' reign, let me read that. 
is that the, the, the remainder of Hyrcanus' reign was marked by his efforts to punish his enemies, what of the Syrians and enlarge Judea's boundaries. Although he struggled in vain to destroy Ptolemy, he successfully thwarted Syrian incursions by alliance with Rome and conquered the unfriendly neighboring territories of Samaria and Idumea, Edom. He forced Idumea to convert to Judaism, the first example of conversion imposed by the Jews in their history. Upon his death, Hykenas was succeeded by his eldest son, Aristobulus I. Hykenas' reign was the last was the last under which Judea was a powerful united state. You see that thing? So mm -hmm. John Hykenas, he converted many of the Jews, the many of the Edomites to Judaism. That's why today you see uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, they say, no, I'm in Yehuda, I'm a Jew. No, no, they are converts. They were forced to convert to Judaism or we were gonna kill them off. That's why we forced them to convert to Judaism. That's why today they call themselves Jewish because they know they are not the real Jews. That's why they say that. Okay. Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of, uh, I'll give you an example, Luke 1 and 5. Because in Luke 1 and 5, it gives you an example of the descendants of the, the Edomites that were forced to convert to Judaism by John High Cranus during the time of the Hasmonean dynasty. Okay. Luke 1 and 5. Read that. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, mm -hmm. the king of Judea, mm -hmm. a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. You see that part right there? It says there was in the days of Herod, king of Judea. You understand? How was Herod king of Judea? Because he was a convert. He converted to Judaism. So his ancestors that was practicing Judaism because they were forced to convert during the time of the Greeks, they continued those traditions which were not theirs. That's why he was the king of Judea because Rome set him up. But they still considered themselves as Jewish, meaning converts. You understand? So give me that in um, give me that in the Zondervan Compe Bible teacher. Who has that? Um, get the it, definition sir. of the word, get the definition of Herod. Herod. Okay. The definition of Herod. Reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 224. Read. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine. You see that thing? No, Idumean rulers of Palestine. Come on, read it correctly. Idumean rulers of Palestine. Read on. Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine. Keep reading. Line. Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procurator of Judea in 47 BC. You see that thing? So he was set up by what? By Julius Caesar. He was set up by Rome to become the king of Judea because during that time, the prophecy tell, tells you in Jeremiah that there's not going to be any king of Judah or of Israel sitting on the throne when Christ was going to be born. You read about that in Isaiah chapter seven also. So now what we're reading here, I'm showing you that Herod was a convert. So the people that you see in our land today calling themselves Jewish, those are converts. Those are not the real Jews, you understand? Their forefathers is Antipater, you understand? Those are their forefathers, okay? Now watch this, give me Revelation two verse nine. You know this one, okay, read it. Revelation 2 verse 9. These are converts. These are not the real Jews. They were forced to convert to Judaism. So today, because they always wanted our land, now they got it. You understand? Read that. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But I the synagogue of Satan. So the people that call themselves Jewish today, the Jewish people, they are the house of Satan. That is the house of Satan right there. 
That's not the people of God. That's not the people of Jeremiah. Those are not the people of Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. Those are not the people of God. Those are all Edomites. They are calling themselves Jewish because they are telling you that we are converts. We are not the real Jews. You understand? Let's get the prophecy. Give me Daniel 11 verse 14. Let's get the prophecy. You understand? How they would end up in that land. Because that, not, that is not their homeland. That is not their birthright. You understand? They forced themselves into that land because they always wanted the city of palm trees. Read that. Daniel 11 verse 14. Daniel chapter 11 verse 14. Come on. And in those times, there shall, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Mm -hmm. Also, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish their vision, but they shall fall. You hear what the Bible is saying? Because it says, when it says the king of the south is talking about the Ptolemy dynasty. It says, and also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. Who are the robbers of our people? It's talking about Jewish people, Edomites. That took our land. When did they take the land in these last days? The year was 1948 under the Balfour Declaration mandate. That's when they got access to that land. But that's not their land. You understand? Clueless Negroes like Uramaposa, former Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's why they are cluelessly, blindly making deals with their enemies that hate and despise them. You understand? That's why it says they will exalt themselves as the Jews and they will establish the vision that they are the Jews, but God says they shall fall because when the Lord returns, they are going to be utterly punished. You understand? The reason why they are in that land is for, for, is the, for the fulfillment of prophecy. Get that in Luke 21, 24. Luke 21, verse 24. They are fulfilling prophecy, but they are not going to be there for long. They are going to be there until the time of rulership is over, is done. Luke 21, 24. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword oh, and yeah. shall be led away Israelites. captive. Talking about the Israelites, he says, we shall fall by the edge of the sword because those of our forefathers that ignored the prophecy that Christ told them, they stayed behind. They said they wanted to fight with Rome. Okay, go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Meaning those that were spared, those that were not killed off, he says they were led away captive into all nations, meaning we would be scattered among all nations on earth. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ is letting you know right here that Jerusalem, that we will not be in the land in the last days. We would be scattered among all nations on earth through slavery, colonization, and forced migration. And Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ is telling us that in the last days, there's going to be somebody else that will be in our land. Who's that? Amalek, Jewish people that occupied that land in 1948. And who did they find in that land? They found the, the Palestinians. The Palestinians entered into that land during their conquest after they destroyed our city of Byzantine, Constantinople. So during their conquest of getting more territory, they ended up in the so-called Middle East. You understand? Northeast Africa. So when the white people, Jewish people, Amalek, when they went into that land in 1948, the Palestinians was already there, but the Palestinians, that's not their land. They got access to that land after they conquered us in 1453 under the Renaissance. You understand? Palestinians and white people working together to destroy the city of Constantinople. That's what this is going into. Now watch this. Now let's go over the Balfour Declaration because the reason why they are over there in our land today is because of this Balfour Declaration mandate. So let's open it up. Okay. Yeah, let's read that. The Balfour Declaration, read that. Reading from wikipedia.org Balfour Declaration Wait. The Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War, announcing support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. 
then an Ottoman region with a small minority Jewish population. He says, then an, Orop uh, then an Ottoman region with a small minority Jewish population. So the Ottoman Turks, they were already in the land because they had destroyed us together with the Edomites when they destroyed our city of Byzantine. So guess what? The Balfour Declaration was a public statement that was issued by the British government, not the Mosai, not the Heavenly Father. No, the British government did this, not the Mosai God. I need you to understand that. Keep reading. The declaration was contained in a, in a letter dated 2nd November 1917 from the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to Lord Rothschild, a leader of the British Jewish community for transmission to the Zionist Federation of Great Britain and Ireland. Read. The text of the declaration was published in the press on 9th November, 1917. So now this was published in 1917, the 9th of November, 1917, but it only came to pass in 1948, two years after World War II. Now watch this, let's read about that. This is the letter that was sent, okay? Okay, read it, read the letter. Foreign Office, November 2nd, 1917. Dear uh -huh. Lord Rothschild, Rothschild, I have much- So, Roth, hold on, it says, Dear Lord Rothschild. Rothschild means red child. Red, Roth is German for red. Rothschild. Go ahead. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment of Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. And it we use their- It says, okay, let me read. You sound, you sound tired. Let me read. It says His Majesty's government view with favor, with favor, the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. It, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice, prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, which is a lie. That's why they're fighting with the Palestinians over there or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. But they are not the real Jews. I should, I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. So guess what? This letter was written, you understand, to, to the Rothschild, you understand, by Balfour, to make sure that they bring Jewish people, which are not the real Jews, which are converts from what? From the time of Herod. Before that, from the time of the Greeks by John Hyrcanus, the son of Simon Maccabee. Understand that we forced them to convert to Judaism. That's why today they call themselves Jewish. They are letting you know we are not the real Jews, but we want to be like, but they will never be. You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. It was inevitable. It was inevitable that the arrival of newly appointed Israel ambassador in South Africa, Aliyev Balotsky, will trigger a massive debate about Israel-South Africa's diplomatic ties. They haven't been seeing eye to eye on the long-standing conflict in the Middle East. But the Jewish Board of Deputies has thrown its weight behind the ambassador's appointment. That's we have Jewish board deputy. That's a clueless Negro right there, Sir Ramaphosa. Clueless Negro. Okay. Really commend President Ramaphosa for accepting the credentials of the ambassador from the State of Israel. We believe this is the correct way to engage in the Middle East for South Africa and the ANC government to make a meaningful contribution to creating a Palestinian state living side by side next to a Jewish state in secure borders. We can only make a difference if we engage. We further encourage the South African government to send an ambassador back to Tel Aviv. Not everyone is delighted.
Remember, he says to send the ambassador back to Tel Aviv. Guess who's in Tel Aviv? Remember. Remember what we read in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is the modern, is modern day Tel Aviv. So who's occupying Ashdod today, Tel Aviv? Amalek. Not the real Jews. The real Jews, we are scattered all over the earth through slavery and colonization, forced migration. You understand? On slave ships, we were scattered. So the people in our land today, obviously those are not the real Jews. You understand? About the move. The embassy of Israel must be removed from South Africa as part of our continued solidarity struggles we wage together with the broader alliance, including the African National Congress. We call on Sir Ramaphosa to disassociate himself from the people of Israel as part of our solidarity struggles. We further call on government to remain true to its resolutions of downgrading the embassy of Israel as part of a, a process of removing it totally from our land. This analyst believes an attack on South Africa is unwarranted. Even though South Africa has condemned Israel on the Palestinian issue, it has stated categorically that it does not want to cut ties with Israel, but it wants to build bridges and wants to continue being a peace broker. And therefore, I would suggest from my side that South African public should give the South African government an opportunity to continue engaging with the Israeli government, with the Israeli ambassador on issues that affect the Palestinians. Meanwhile, the South African government says it has maintained diplomatic relations with Israel, whilst at the same time it will continue to support the struggle of Palestine. Pretoria maintains it's in favor of a two-state solution, with the people of Palestine and Israel living peacefully side by side. That will never happen. There will never be peace on that land until the 12 tribes of Israel rule this earth. So as long as South Africa and, and, and all these clueless Negroes saying, no, we want peace for Israel, peace for Israel, there will never be peace on that land. There will never be peace. The Palestinians will never coexist with the Jewish people because those are not real Jews. Those are just white people who stole our culture, our identity, our land, and our bio. You understand? So there will never be peace on that land until we take over this earth and rule the earth. You understand? Give me the book of Isaiah 8 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9. Let's read that. Excuse me, sir. Isaiah 8 verse 9. Come on. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9. Go ahead. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. You hear what the Bible is saying? The, the Most High God is saying, if we associate ourselves with Amalek, with the Palestinians, or with all these nations we associate ourselves, we learn their culture, their heritage, you understand? All these demonic customs that they come with, worshiping their idols, the most High God it says, we are going to be broken in pieces, meaning it's not going to work. It's not going to work. They can send their ambassador here all they want. The clueless Negroes can say, no, we must give South African government a chance. These Negroes are just clueless. They don't know what's going on. There will never be peace. You understand? Because that land don't belong to them. It does not belong to the Palestinians that are over there. It does not belong to white people who call themselves Jewish. It doesn't belong to them either. It belongs to us. Keep reading. Verse 10. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Read. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. For God is with thing? us. You see, it says it's not going to work. Speak the word, it says it's not going to stand. All this decree, this letter of credence that they are making is not going to work. Like we read in Daniel 11, verse 14, it says, but they shall fall, exalting themselves as the people of God. Go ahead. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people. You say, see that thing? 
the most high God instructed us that we must not walk in the way of these people. So what Buchi, Justin, Muhuen, Muhuen, what they are doing is they are just living in a fairy world. Purisel Ramaphosa, what they are doing, they are living in a fairy world. Whatever they are doing is not going to work. That's what God is saying. Read on. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye they are fear, nor mm -hmm. be afraid. You see that then the Lord is saying, whatever confederacy that they are making with these nations, whatever confederacy they are making with the Palestinians or with Amalek or with China or with Russia, the Lord says is not going to work. He says, neither fear ye they are fear. Don't be afraid because the reason why they are making a confederacy with them is because they are afraid. They are afraid of losing foreign aid. That's the reason why they are doing this. Keep reading. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and mm -hmm. let him be your fear and Come let on. him be your dread. You see that thing? The Lord is the one that we must reverence. We must not reverence the Palestinians. We must not reverence Amalek or Jewish people staying in our land today. You understand? The law says we must not reverence them. That's why our people, these clueless Negroes calling, call themselves leaders, they are making a confederacy with them. But the Lord says it's not going to work. You understand? They're just playing games. It's not going to work. Okay, now watch this. Hmm. Let me deal with this one. Okay. I'm almost done. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Here we go. And exclusivity, where it matters the most. Chief Justice Mukhweng Mukhweng is no stranger to controversial statements. The pro-Israel views have come back to haunt the Chief Justice. Let me give the base. The first base I give is in Psalm 122, verse 6, which says, um, 122, verse 6, which says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. And three, also Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, that says to me as a Christian, that if I curse Abraham and Israel, God, the Almighty God will curse me too. So I'm under an obligation as a Christian to love Israel, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, which actually means the peace of Israel. And I cannot, as a Christian, do anything other than love and pray for, for Israel because I know hatred for Israel by me and for my nation will can only attract unprecedented curses upon our nation. You see that thing? That's what they teach in the Christian church. These cruelest, wicked pastors, they make me sick. That is why you hear, I mean, a chief justice with qualifications. Hmm? Look at the foolishness that's coming out of his mouth. Watch this. Because he's quoting Psalms 122, right? Read Psalms 122, verse 6. Watch this. He's quoting Psalms 122, verse 6. Let's see what this verse is saying. Okay. Psalms chapter 122, verse 6. Go ahead. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. They shall prosper that love thee. It says, we must pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Now, who's this talking about? Jump up to verse 1. Let's see who is Jerusalem. Okay, read that. Psalm 122, verse 1. Go ahead. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is the house of Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And he's going to say when we read down. Keep reading. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. You see that this is prophecy. This has not happened yet. It says, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. So what is this talking about? Keep reading. Watch this. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. It says, our feet shall, this is future prophecy, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. When will that happen? Give me Revelation 21 verse 12. Our feet shall stand. This is future prophecy. This has not happened yet. You understand? Christ has not returned yet. Christ has not destroyed America yet. 
America is not wiped off yet. America is not left as a puff of smoke anymore yet. You understand? The nations have not gone into captivity yet. So therefore, guess what? This verse that we're reading in Psalms 122, this has not taken place yet. Okay? Read that. Revelation 21, verse 12. Come on. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. And Actually, gates... you know what? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get this, give me the book of Isaiah. Okay, because Isaiah spoke about this thing. He says, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together because this hasn't happened yet. Now watch this. Give me Isaiah 56. Okay, Isaiah chapter 56. Because these clueless Negroes with all these qualifications they got, they have no idea what's going on. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 56 verse 5. Let's get the prophecy. Okay, read that. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 5. Go ahead. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Come on. I will give them an everlasting name that should not be cut off. That shall not be cut off. This is future prophecy. It says, even unto them will I give mine house, that's the house of Israel, and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons of uh, sons and of daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off, meaning we're going to rule forever. So what is this talking about? Is is future prophecy regarding the coming together of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jump down to verse 8. Let's see who is he talking about. Come on. Isaiah 56, verse 8. Read. The Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel, says The what? The outcasts of Israel. The outcasts of Israel. Keep reading. Come on. Says, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. Talk about Northern Kingdom. Northern Kingdom will be brought back together into the fold and all 12 will be back together again as one nation. Now, give me Revelation 21, verse 12, because it says, in verse 5 says, even unto them will I give, my, give in mine house and within my walls. What is that talking about? In mine house and within my walls. Revelation 21, verse 12. Watch this. Come on. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. Go ahead. And had a wall great and high, and mm -hmm. had 12 gates, Read. and at the gates, 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You see that thing? He says, and I had a wall great and high. That's why it says, within my walls. And had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels. And the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. This has not happened yet. So what, uh, what, what King David is prophesying in Psalms 122 is the same thing that Isaiah is saying which this prophecy has not taken place yet. So the people in our land today calling themselves Jewish, Jerusalem has not been built yet. The city of Jerusalem has not been built yet. Go back to Psalms 122. Read verse 2 and 3 together again. Psalm chapter 122, verse 2. Go ahead. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Mm. Go ahead. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Come on. Whether the tribes go up, the whether tribes the of the Lord, whether the tribes go up, whether the tribes go up, whether the tribes go up. So it's letting you know that it's not talking about the Jewish people in our land today because that's not the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? Once the city of Jerusalem is built, it says the tribes will go up within those walls. They will enter in through those 12 gates, according to the names, excuse me, of the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. The tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. You see that thing? That's when we're going to give thanks unto the name of the Lord because 
the Lord is going to gather us from all four corners of the earth where we are scattered, and we are going to be, we're going to go back home. And our city of Jerusalem is going to be builded by all these nations that, is, that have enslaved us. They put us under the heavy system of apartheid and so forth. They're going to pay for everything that they did to us. Watch this. You see, you see that part when it says, whether the tribes go up? Give me the book of Jeremiah 50 verse 4. Okay, Jeremiah 50 verse 4. So Jeremiah is prophesying of the coming kingdom. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 4. Go ahead. In those days and in that time, says the Lord, the children mm -hmm. of Israel shall come. Come on. They and the children of Judah together, going Weep. and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. You see that thing? It says, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. That's what we're reading in Psalms 122, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah 56, verse 5, Revelation 21, verse 12. Go ahead. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Because we're going to rule forever. He says, he says, it shall not be cut off. That's what we read in Isaiah. Go back to Psalms 122 now. Psalms 122 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 122 verse 5. Mm -hmm. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. No, the thrones of the house of Amalek. The thrones of the house of David. The thrones of the house of David, because during the time when King David was the king, all 12 tribes of Israel was together under one. Go ahead. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. They shall prosper that love thee. Because right now as a nation, we are slaves. We are scattered among all nations on earth. Why must we pray for the peace of Amalek? Because Amalek is not Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem. You understand? That's why it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem because right now there will not be peace on earth until the 12 tribes of Israel rule. Right now, if those people in our land today, they call themselves Jewish Amalek, which is the bastards according to the Bible, Zechariah 9 and 6, there should be peace on earth. Right now, there's no peace on earth. That's letting you know those people in that, in that land, those are not the real Jews. Keep reading. Go ahead. Peace be within thy walls mm -hmm. and prosperity within thy palaces. Because at that point, we are going to be in our kingdom. Go ahead. For my brethren and companions say, I will now say, peace be within thee. You see that thing? Peace be within thee. Because at that point, here's what's going to happen. You know, keep reading, keep reading. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. In the house of the Lord our God is the 12 tribes of Israel. So it says, for my brethren and companions sake, I will now say, peace be within thy walls. When is this going to happen? Give me Isaiah 2 real quick. Isaiah chapter 2. Okay. Isaiah 2 and verse 1. Watch this. Isaiah 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Because at this point, what we're reading here, at this point, Esau, Amalek, white people, Caucasian race, they are going to be wiped off from the face of the earth. They are no longer going to exist on this earth because that time will come where they will, will never see a white person on this earth ever again. Thank God for that thing. Read again. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Read on. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all Read. nations shall flow unto it. All those nations is talking about Judah and Israel in Jeremiah 50 verse 4 and 5. Go ahead. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, 
to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Go ahead. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the Maybe. word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see what's going to be taught in the kingdom of heaven on earth is as out of Zion shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Because right now in, in, in Israel today, the laws of God are not being taught. That's why every year there's a Tel Aviv gay parade. There's a gay parade in Israel today. So they're not teaching the laws of God. They're eating pork. You understand? Shrimp, lobster. They are doing all manner of filth in that land. So those are not the people of God. This prophecy has not come to pass yet. It says, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That has not happened yet. Keep reading. And he shall judge among the nations uh -huh. and shall rebuke many people. Go ahead. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Really? Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Uh -huh. Neither shall they learn war anymore. You see that thing? Meaning there's not going to be war. Nations will not want to go to war with each other. What's going on right now? When Russia wants to go to war with Ukraine, America wants to get involved. You understand? Once America get involved, the EU is going to get involved. Then is the beginning of World War III. So what you are seeing in the news and the things that they are telling you regarding the people in that land calling themselves Jewish, the Palestinians fighting. They, listen, they are, those are not the people of God because it does not line up with the prophecy. Nations are lifting up swords against nations right now. They want to go to war. The preparation of the war of Armageddon. That has not taken place yet. The 12 tribes of Israel has not conquered all these nations on earth. We're not ruling the nations yet. We're still yet to rule them. So the people in our land today, those are not the real Jews. Understand that. Okay? Now watch this. Let's keep playing. So what do I think should happen? I think, I as a citizen of this great country, that we are denying ourselves a wonderful opportunity of being a game changers in the Israeli-Palestinian situation. Mm. We know what it means to be at loggerheads, to be a nation at war with itself. And therefore, the forgiveness that was demonstrated the understanding, the big heart that was displayed by President Nelson Mandela. Here we go. You see that thing? They will always bring Mandela into this thing. And we, the people of South Africa, following his, his leadership, is an asset that we must use around the world to bring about peace where there is no peace, to mediate effectively based on our rich experience. Did Israel take away our land? I want you to listen to this part right here because this is where he really aggravated me on this point. He vexed my spirit. To bring about peace where there is no peace, to mediate effectively based on our rich experience. Did Israel take away our land? Yes. These Jewish people, they took our land, they took our culture, they took our identity, they stole everything of ours. And guess what? They were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. They were the ones that were responsible for insuring the ships. They were the ones that were manning those ships. They were captains of those ships. They are the ones that paid for the ships. They owned the shipping business that was transporting our forefathers and our foremothers, our sons and daughters to North, Central, and South America in the 14, 15, 16, and 1700s. So did they take our land? Yes. Give me Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36 verse 5. They did take our land, okay? They took our land. Let's see what God says about this thing. Who chief justice Muhwen Muhwen, with all these qualifications they got, they are clueless Negroes, okay? Read it. Ezekiel. Uh, I beg your pardon, Ezekiel 36 sir? verse 5, come on. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5. Read. Therefore, Thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen right. and against all Idumia. And against which all Idumia. All Idumia. That's talk about white people because that's their biblical name. Idumia. Esau, Edom. Edomites. That's them. Go ahead. 
Today, they call themselves Europeans. They call themselves Jewish. They call themselves um, French, British, you understand, Portuguese, Spaniards, okay, Red Americans. That's what they call themselves today. Go ahead. And against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. What did they do? With the, which have appointed my land into their possession. So if the Lord is prophesying through Ezekiel is saying, Idumia would take our land. They have appointed God's land into their possession. When did this take place? May 14th, 1948, by the League of Nations. The British government is the one that put them in our land, 1948. They appointed our land into their possessions. Read. With the joy of all their hearts. Because you see that they were rejoicing that they took our land from us and now they are occupying it. That's why they want to kick the Palestinians out of there. And the Palestinians also, they were involved in what? In selling our people into slavery under the sub sahara slave trade. That started in 652 AD until today because they are still enslaving our people in Libya today, in South Sudan, the, the Arabs, the Palestinians. Read. With despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. With despiteful minds because they hate us. They always hated us when we came out of Egypt. They came behind us and they were killing our sons and daughters. You understand? Amalek, these Jewish people, these bastards in our land today, according to Zechariah 9 verse 6. Now give me Ezekiel 35 verse 10, okay? Because this is how they really feel about our land. You understand? Read it. Because now they've occupied it. They've occupied our land. They are living there. They say they are us. Read. Ezekiel chapter 35 verse 10. Go ahead. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will they, possess it. They, they said, these two nations talk about Judah and Israel. These two countries is talking about Israel and America. These two countries, Israel, the land of Israel and the land of America. Go ahead. And these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it. Where's the Lord was there? Where's the Lord was there? You see that thing? Because the most High God gave us the land of Israel to us. And guess what? The land of America was given to Northern Kingdom, the Native American Indians. And guess what they did? They killed, during the 1492 of the Spanish conquest of Christopher Columbus, they killed 700 million. 700 million. During the transatlantic slave trade, they said, 200 million of our people died during the Middle Passage. You understand? 700 million Native American Indians, 200 million of our forefathers during the transatlantic slave trade. Mm. And they're going to talk about the so-called 6 million Jewish people that were killed by Hitler. Listen, those were white people fighting other white people. You understand? Read on, verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 11. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will even do according to thine, to thine anger and according mm -hmm. to thine envy, which thou yeah. hast used out of thy hatred against them. Stop right there. So Amalek, Jewish people in our land today, with whom former Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng is defending, and Sel Ramaphosa, the clueless Negro, Guess what? The God is telling us, it says, these Jewish people, because they always wanted to occupy our land, he says they have anger against us, they have envy against us, and they have hatred against us. So they have anger, envy, and hatred against us. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. You see, the Lord says he's going to judge them. Jump down to verse 15. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 15. Go ahead. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate. Because so we were not there. Because we was kicked out of our land by the Mosad because we broke his laws. Read. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and mm -hmm. all Idumia, even all of it. 
and they shall know that I am the Lord. You see what God is saying? He says, oh, Mount Seir, that's talking about Esau, Edom, Idumia, and all Idumia, even all of it. The Lord says he's going to wipe them out. He's going to make them desolate. Give me that in um, Obadiah, verse 17. Then we're going to close it up. Okay, Obadiah, verse 17. Let's read that. Okay. We are Obadiah. I need you to understand that. Read verse 17 and 18. Come on. Obadiah, verse 17. Go ahead. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, mm -hmm. and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Go ahead. I mean, and we're going to own all nations on earth. Read on. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house mm -hmm. of Joseph a flame, Read. and the house of Esau for stubble. Meaning what? It's going to be burned then, down. America is going to, hold on. It says, and the house of Esau, the house of Esau is talking about all the entire Caucasian race. Today they call themselves German Caucasians, Russian Caucasians, Jewish Caucasians. They are all white people. The Lord says, the house of Esau for stubble. Because stubble is when something has been burned down to the ground and all that is left is just stubble. Go ahead. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the uh -huh. Lord hath spoken it. You see what God is saying? He says there's going to come a time when the Most High God is going to wipe out the entire Caucasian race on the face of the planet Earth. For the Lord has spoken it. Thus saith the Lord. So which you former Chief Justice Mukwem Mukwem, he's just a clueless Negro. We love him, but he must repent. Sir Ramaphosa, true, another clueless Negro. We love him, but he must get his mind right. Did Israel take away the land of Africa? Yes. Did Israel take the mineral wealth of South Africa and of Africa? Yes. These utterances on his love for Israel landed the Chief Justice in hot water with an NGO Africa for Palestine. A complaint laid to the Judicial Conduct Committee found Mukweng guilty and ordered the Chief Justice to apologize. Now, Mukweng Mukweng will have to eat the humble pie and apologize. I will not reject my God. I will not apologize for believing in my God. I will not apologize for being a Christian. I will not apologize for prayer. I will not apologize for holding onto the word of God. I will never. Even if 50 million people can, be, can march every day for the next 10 years, for me to retract or apologize for what I say, I will not do it. I will never say I hate anybody or any nation. I will never. There will therefore be no retraction. There is nothing to retract. There will be no apology. Not even this political apology that in case I have offended anybody without meaning to offend them, for that reason I will not apologize for anything. There is nothing to apologize for. There is nothing to retract. I can't apologize for loving I can't apologize for not harboring hatred and bitterness. I will not. If I perish, I perish. The Chief Justice will not perish. You know what? Listen. You see all these things that he's saying? They forced him to apologize and he did it. Because on, on the Star newspaper, on when was it? Was it um, on Friday? He, he put a public apology. Now read the public apology right there. Read it. Apology and retraction. I, Mukweng Mukweng, Chief Justice of the Republic of South Africa, hereby apologize unconditionally for becoming involved in political controversy through my utterances in the online seminar webinar hosted by the Jerusalem Post on 23rd June 2020, in which I participated. You see that thing? I further. So he is saying, hold on. He says he was not a poor, but he's a poor judge. They made him do it. You understand? Go ahead. I further hereby unreservedly retract and withdraw the following statement, which I uttered subsequently thereto, or other words to the same effect. 
-hmm. I stand by my refusal. I stand by my refusal to retract or apologize for any part of what I said during the webinar. Listen, he just apologized. It was the way it was. It was on the front page of the of the Star newspaper. Now watch this. Give me the three holy children. The three holy children and verse nine. We're gonna read nine and ten. The three holy children, verse nine. Go ahead. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, lawless. most hateful forsakers of God, and what? to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world. You talk about Esau, the white man. Go ahead. And now we cannot open our mouths. We, we, we have become a... And now we cannot open our mouths. Yeah, that's exactly, that's why they forced him to apologize. He says, and now we cannot open our mouths, meaning speak truth to power. You can't do it. You understand? Read on. We have become a shame and reproach mm -hmm. to thy servants and to them that worship thee. You see that thing right there? That's the state of the nation of Israel today. We're not talking about those white people that stole our land and our culture and everything that is ours and our name. The name Israel. The name Israel was given to our forefather, Jacob. But they stole that name. You understand? But they are Jewish. They are letting you know even in the name that they are not the real thing. That's why um, after the Six-Day War, when Israel was fighting with um, the, the, the president, I think it's the president of is it Saudi Arabia or Palestine, he's saying, how did Israel, how did the, how did Israel, um, he says, what, how did the Jews leave Israel black and come back white? And guess what? What did they do to him? They made war with him and he was put to death. You understand? Because they know the history. Okay. They know the history. That's why they made him do this thing. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. These do in the remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this to ye as oft as ye drink it in the remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.